Hello, hello, friendos. Just waiting for this song to start. Dial in the audio for us. <laughs> I think it's good. Seems super quiet though. Okay, the song is good. Here we go. Everyone is so pumped. What is this? Welcome back, friends. How are we doing? So good to be back. I will say this week went by really fast, but it was fun. I'm doing good, Blood Oak. It's Friday. <coughs> Sammy's home early. <coughs> Hello, Deep True. Bless you as well. Whew. Kimmers, thank you for being first. As always, Dust tried so hard today. Hi, Dust. And Blood Oak, welcome. Diamondless, how are you doing? Beachy Peasy Sandy. Titan, hello. Cookie, how is how are your cookies, I should ask? Rephrase that. The real magic cookie, how are your cookies? I'm hoping they're magical. Yeah, was that a sneeze on command? I don't even know, actually. And hi, Mickey. As well as hot Carl. Yeah, welcome friends. Okay, I'm gonna try to not be distracted. I got like a little pimple on my lip the other day. And now I just have a little scabby. I don't like how it looks though. I'm distracting. It's like, is there something on my lip? So far the ginger ones are your favorite? Seriously? I thought those ones like weren't the most delicious ones, but thanks, I'm glad. Yeah, I like the spice too. Sam really liked them as well. Yeah, acknowledge, move on. Exactly. Just so someone's like, are you okay, Kate? What happened to your lip? Just a little pimple. I don't know what the heck. Maybe I've been like putting chapstick on and a pore got clogged. I don't know. I'm okay though. I'm okay. Okay, so yeah, Sam's saying like, it's probably because it's so dry here. It's when my skin gets dry. We are cooking some French food today. I also had a really fun morning. We did a little catering function for someone from Sam's work. So last night I did gluten-free carrot cake cupcakes. We baked, I think around 32 of them. And then this morning I finished them off with the cream cheese icing, some vanilla in there, and they turned out so good. So I'll show you a picture. <laughs> I'm just getting a video right now from Keisha who picked them up. I should watch it right now. But yeah, this is how they turned out. Absolutely love them. And I ended up with like a bunch of extra icing. So I'm thinking that we'll make them together coming up next week too. Use up the rest of the icing. They turned out so good. You wouldn't even know that they're gluten free. They're not dry. They are moist like the recipe says. It was a great find. And yeah, they're not like super sweet. Hi, Nessie, how are you doing? Okay, so that was my morning. And other than that, I've just been kind of organizing myself. I know you can't see over here really, but if I turn the camera, you will. It's just hiding behind the other scene. We have the oven inside as well as the slicer cabinet. So the slicer is gonna come in today too. Yeah, it's been good, nice and organized now. Love it. Ooh, yo, <laughs> so yummy. Okay, so our menu that we're gonna cook today. Did we come up with this together or Blood Oak? You were the one that wanted us to make the Coco Van, right? And that's for you, Deep True. Can't wait to hear Kate say all of the French terms, please. Yeah, a gorgonzola sauce, because we had some leftover and I thought it would be a good cookie. Like not too much in there, just a little bit of funk would go nice with the chicken as well, I thought, and the mashed potatoes. So coco vin is a traditional French dish. We'll read into it a little bit more once we start cooking, but the gist of it is a chicken braised with red wine, bacon, and mushrooms in there, as well as some herbs and some other tasty stuff. And then to go along with it, a French style of potato called Duchesse potato, so you make your mashed potato mixture up. I think there is uh, egg in it as well, just for structure. Maybe a little bit of egg mixed in. Just gonna take a peek at the recipe. 
I remember learning this in culinary school. Yeah, so potatoes, egg, garlic, cream, and sour cream. And then you can either pipe out the mashed potatoes into like little rounds and then bake them. Or the way that Bon Appetit did the Duchesse potatoes is they just put it in a casserole and like made the top look nice and baked it that way. So two ways to do it. One will take a little bit longer, but it will look fancier, right? And high clammy. Yeah, I have been having good days. Oh, a physics lecture? Is Annie teaching it? <laughs> I will probably still be live in one and a half hours for sure, I would say. And you're preparing for a snowstorm. Ooh, be safe out there. Yeah, the little rounds, right? And Blood Oak, you're saying together with Boeuf Bourguignon is your favorite French dishes, the Coco Van. Those are like two that we learn in culinary school for like cooking basics as well. I think they're important ones. Teaches you how to braise properly. Okay, so that's the chicken and the potato and then rolling right along. So some roasted asparagus will do just on a sheet pan, easy peasy in the oven. While it's roasting, we can make the gorgonzola cream sauce. So gorgonzola is a blue cheese, a little bit creamier than what Rockfort is the brand right of blue cheese I forget the other one you had it too in culinary school diamondless it was fun yeah I love making these dishes like 10 years later yeah it's so good dust I can't wait to like grill asparagus again in the summer olive oil, salt, that's really all you need, right? And then for dessert for us today, we're gonna try our hand at chocolate mousse. Poached egg is good with asparagus too, yes. Yeah, eggs and asparagus and mushrooms, such good combo, really delish. What else? I do also have some other news. So one of our friends from the island, the owners of Wickerland Patio, where we used to get the grill stuff, they tagged me in something from the local news source there. Remember when we did the segment with Czech News, when they came over and I did some cooking on the Big Green Egg for the news station? So now they're looking for a new host for a coastal cooking show that will be filmed in the spring and it'll air in the fall there's 13 episodes so i'm gonna apply for that friends i'm gonna apply see what we hear back but i think i would be a great fit for that all about cooking coastal is i have a lot of places that i can go and stay there for whatever duration of the filming and i'll also be able to still stream while i'm not filming right so i'm excited i think we'll We'll already have an in since we did the segment. Let me see if I can pop up the one command that Vuen made. Was it like, was it this one? Famous? No. I'm reading. This is what happens when you have so many commands. Do, 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 do. I'm still looking. I think we deleted it. <laughs> We're having feta complaints already. Please. Okay, you can complain today, just not tomorrow, because we're cooking with feta tomorrow. Oh no, Mickey, you had a nail in your tire today? Were you able to get it fixed? That's never fun. Oh, thank you, Samo. Yeah, that's us. Sweet fame. Oh, I was so close. Thank you, Cookie. Okay, so check that out. So that's when they did a little feature on us during the pandemic. So since I've already been featured on the show once, I think we already have it in. I got to make a one minute video and send it to them. I said, well, easy enough. Good morning, White Dove, how are you? And you took it to the garage today, nice. And yeah, sorry you guys that the stream didn't end up working yesterday. That was super unfortunate. So, are you knocking to me? Nope, phone fell on the ground. Oh, okay. I was like, should I not say anything? 
I thought Sam was like sneaky knocking on the wall. Like, hey, <laughs> don't do that. Need a list of commands so you don't forget. Like I have to make that on a Google Doc. Okay, day. Let's get our list out and then away we go. So I'm thinking that we'll probably start. I need to turn this back the other way. We'll probably start by making the moose and then just let it chill the rest of the way. And then we can just work on the main dish for today. Hi, doggo. How are you? You're having a good day with anxiety today? That's good, Mickey. Yeah, I've been feeling really good. Definitely lowering the caffeine intake helps. Guys, can you hear that audio or not? So chocolate mousse. This is something that I did actually spend a lot of time in culinary school learning how to make properly. I have not made a ton of it since then, so good to get some practice in again. Chocolate mousse is the ultimate dessert for any chocolate lover. We like to make ours using bittersweet chocolate, which is high in pure cocoa, at least 35% cocoa solids. I got these little melting, dark chocolate melting wafers is what I picked up from the store yesterday, kind of like a higher quality chocolate. So that's what we'll use for this. It's gonna be perfect. And that will give us deep chocolate flavor. When they say this chocolate is also good to eat. Okay, so prep time, it says 30 minutes. Servings will make six and then total time is one hour. Four large egg yolks, four tablespoons of sugar, two cups of heavy cream, eight ounces of melted chocolate and a teaspoon of vanilla. So the way that I've made mousse before in the past may not necessarily be the way that we make it today. Let's read through. Medium saucepan, whisk together the yolks, sugar, and three quarters of a cup of the cream. Cook that over medium low heat until it coats the back of a spoon three to four minutes. Remove from heat, whisk in melted chocolate and vanilla and strain into a bowl. So that's kind of weird the way that they do that, but it's fine. We will follow the steps. And then with an electric mixer, we will beat the rest of the whipping cream with a little bit of sugar until the stiff peaks form. And then one third at a time, we fold in the whipped cream to that other kind of dairy chocolate mixture. And that way it still is nice and light like a mousse. And that is kind of the most important part is being able to fold it properly so that you don't dissipate all of the air that we worked really hard to incorporate. And then all it says is once it's done, spoon into serving dishes, chill covered at least 30 minutes up to three days. So we have some kind of cute little cups that I think we are going to fill. And then maybe just pop in a little container the rest of the way. So I'll give these a little rinse. So I got these from Cambro. They're like little dessert shot glasses. Yeah, polycarbonate dessert glass. Been waiting to use them. This is like the perfect time. Doot, 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 little mousse cups. And then you can decide if you want to serve it with whipped cream or not. I always like a little bit of vanilla cream. It's gonna be lovely. Such a simple dessert, but it's so satisfying if you make it right. So that's the mousse. And I think we will start with that because then after this, we can start on the chicken. So chicken braised in red wine. The recipe I linked is from Serious Eats, so they should do a good job explaining all of the steps we need. Oh, my web page just went white. There we go, back to it. <laughs> doop, 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 doop. Holy! Nessie! Thank you, friend. Thank you for the 1,500 Yay! biddies right off the start. Styling in my music a little bit more. Thank you, thank you, friend. Now we're at 85% of the way there. 
And Cookie, you've made the Julia Child's classic Coco Vin. Remember it being really good, but it had a lot of mise en place. Yes. Ooh, yeah. So I even bought the pearl onions for it today. We're going like really classic. Alpha Psycho, one, two, three. Thank you for the follow. Okay, let's read through. Turn it back this way actually is where it should be. There we go. We're nearly at the goal. It is insane. Yeah, thank you for contributing, Nessie. We appreciate you. Cannot wait to meet you and cook for you one day. So this is what Serious Eats says about the braising chicken. A lot of Coco Ven recipes have you braise the bird for hours. That's fine when you're doing it the traditional way with a tough old rooster, which is the actual traditional way. This used to be made with a rooster or like a very old hen, which is why it's braised over time to make the meat more tender. But we have nice and tender roasting hens that we're able to get from the store so we don't have to cook it for as long as they used to. Recipe delivers a rich and deeply flavored braise with red wine, mushrooms, lardons, and onions that tastes like it was in the oven all day, except that it wasn't. <laughs> Active time, 90 minutes. Total time, two hours or two and a half hours. Serves four to six. Perfect. So I have like one whole chicken and then a couple legs and wings. Vyun! Hello, Vyun. How are you? Yeah, happy Friday, friends. We made it through another week. So they say two whole small chickens, two cups of wine, eight ounces of pearl onions, bacon, salt, mushrooms, carrot, garlic, thyme, bay leaf, some broth. Oh, I'll go take out the pork stock. Go get some pork stock. And then just some butter and parsley to finish. Yum, that's gonna be good. Okay, so first thing on the list, we'll do the mousse. And then after that, we will get into the cocoa van, since that is gonna take the most amount of time to prep after. So first we will, let's say, butcher the chicken. I think I'll probably just take the legs off of the chicken even. Is this too too high. That's how Astra feels about taking the legs off of the chicken. Because then we'll have four legs and a couple of wings. I don't, I'm kind of like wary about braising the chicken breast, right? That it will get the most dry. But we can still pop it in there. I'm sure it'll be great. And then like it says, so let's read through. Ah, so we got to blanch the onions. Blanch slash peel. Pearl onion. And I will say the ones that I was able to find yesterday, not super small. They will be really yummy. So this is them. White pearl onions. And then you put them in the hot water for a couple moments whole because it's going to loosen the skin off and kind of make it softer. Otherwise, there's such a pain to peel just dry like that. After that, we will do our lardons. Good girl, Astra. And then I'll put mushrooms next, just so that we chop them up. And then I think we can start the braise. Brown the chicken, add the mushrooms, add your onions, carrot and garlic, cook until browned, add your bacon, wine and thyme. Yeah, easy enough once you have the prep done. <laughs> Kimmers, it is awesome. The fridge is unreal. I can't believe that I have that in my life still. Uh, the only sus thing about it was that literally every single rack that they sent with it is damaged. It has a special coating. 
So they all have Nyx in them, which will make it rest. So they already ordered new ones for us. That was the only thing that was wrong with it, though. Otherwise, like the main part of the fridge was perfect, which is what really matters the most. And yeah, shout out to my brother and Finn helping us, like having to take it off of the pallet and move it around. It was an adventure. It took longer than I thought, but it was a learning experience. Really fun. Nice, Mickey. What did you have for lunch or roux? Okay, that, so after the chicken is finally braising, I just realized that I left this window covering open by accident. There we go. I was like, why does it keep getting so bright? We will go into the Duchesse potato next. Literally just as simple as boiling the potatoes, mixing everything else into them, and then we can pipe it out if we're feeling good about time. Sushi is overrated. Sushi is delicious. Sirloin steak, fries, onion rings, peppercorn sauce, and with wine, of course. Yo, that sounds so good. <laughs> Hey, did anyone watch the episode of Next Level Chef this week? Okay, I think I dialed in the lights now. It was a good one. They went back to Gordon Ramsay Burger, where they filmed the episode. Sam and I have sat there, I think, like three or four times at the bar. It was good. Afternoon, WRX it up. Did we have any police scares on the way home? We actually ended up like literally ending stream right right when you were there yesterday it is basically as soon as we walked in the store the stream cut out so we said heck it but yeah no more scares after that <laughs> we were okay thanks for asking i know the show is making me want to go back to vegas it's like oh man okay so lastly easiest thing on the list today is our asparagus to roast and then a little gorgonzola cream sauce, which I believe starts with a bechamel. That's a mother sauce. So a sauce that is milk based, but thickened with butter and flour. And then from there, we can just crumble in a little bit of gorgonzola, see how it tastes. Might need like a little bit of acid. We'll see. But yeah, easy enough. That's our list. I think once we get started, it'll go pretty quick. Chocolate mousse, it is. And then the reason why I typically always start by doing dessert first on stream is because sometimes they do take a while. And then if anything does mess up when we're making it, at least we still have time to fix it. Not like you're leaving the dessert till the last thing and then it doesn't work out and then no one has dessert and is sad. <laughs> yep, milk and flour, that's the base sauce for many things like mac and cheese, yep. So then you would take the bechamel, which is the basic cream sauce, and you turn it into a Mornay sauce for mac and cheese just by adding cheese into it. That's the rendition off of that. Okay, I'll bring this recipe up and away we go. We'll get all of our ingredients out for the chocolate mousse. And like I said, I'll go rinse out the little mousse cups as well. So those are good to fill. So starting with eggs, sugar, and some cream. And obviously chocolate. And probably like a little bit of vanilla, right? Boom. Boom. Cream. Eggies. Who has made chocolate mousse before? Okay, so we'll set up a little burner going. And then we have to whip the cream. Okay, we got to chill this first mixture anyways, though, so might as well start there. Did 
Did I add a workstation this week? Like you're saying inside of here, Kimmers? I did. Yeah, I've been working really hard behind the scenes to like really organize myself so I can start catering again. It's feeling nice. Like I cleared off both of my standing tables where I stand. Sorry, it's shaking. And so I have all of that space. And then, yeah, we brought in this big thing. This is like the entire, or even the fridge footprint, I think is bigger than this cabinet. So we had to do a little switcheroo, pop the oven on, and then the meat slicer will go here again. Mm, Potocram. I think you cook the entire mixture for Potocram, don't you? Okay, I'm gonna get a little wiping station too. My cloth. Did some laundry this morning too, guys. What happens when you get up early? And yeah, Astra is so ready for cooking today. Yeah, I believe cookie pot creme is like you're cooking the mixture almost like a custard. Like a creme brulee. Let that fill. And then we just need like a really small pot for this first mixture. Probably something like that. Have I ever been to Australia? No, but I would love to go. I mean, I would love to see all places of the world. I've just heard that Australians are kind of like Canadians, so easy to get along with folks there. Yeah, the mousse is like fluffier and uncooked. That's a good way to put it too. Okay. So four egg yolks is what we need. Two tablespoons of sugar and then three quarters of a cup of cream. And that gets cooked low and slow. tablespoon measure and yeah I moved my rolling cart out of out of the area too just getting used to when you switch things up right <laughs> first few times it can be a bit difficult I think moose is more involved to make as well compared to a pot de creme. So guys, all I'm gonna do is crack four whole eggs into this container first, and then we'll take all the yolks out at once. How was my week? It was good. Went by really fast. I'm happy to be back cooking again. Also happy that I got like a little catering gig from one of Sam's co-workers. So that was just like a good feeling to get back into that. Wiperoo, soapy hands. And then I think I'm actually gonna start heating up the cream in here first. I don't think we want to put the yolks right onto the bottom of the pot. All of my measuring cups are freshly washed. Let's do this. Did you see the steam come out of there when I opened it? Insane. Hi, Scat. How are you? Yeah, good one, Diamondless. 
Okay, so three quarter cup. We'll start heating up the cream first. Tired of winter though, Scat? We're almost there. We're almost there. We're like what? November, December, January? We're for sure halfway through already. That. Okay, so now low-ish heat, let's say. So well, let's grab our couple tablespoons of sugar. Yeah, let's go, spring. It's a half tablespoon measure, so I'll do four. I will say though, I, I do love spring. Spring and summer, that's my jam. And then we might as well pop a whisk in here too. Easy enough. And then I suppose for the chocolate, what if we just melt it in the microwave in like a Pyrex bowl? Because they never said any way to melt it. You just have eight ounces of bittersweet chocolate melted. Okay, let's work on this. We'll get our hands dirty. You really like Winter's View? That is true. Yeah, that's something that Sam and I talked about too. It's like it's easier to warm up than cool down. And like after last summer, that was insanity. Really felt my body struggling with the heat. Heat. Flower, how have you been? Hello, island friend. I was wondering, Flower, I was eyeing up the selection of alcohols and liqueurs we have. I have a raspberry liqueur. I also just have like spiced rum, stuff like that. Marsala wine? Those are the options. Okay, whisk this now. Get it incorporated with the cream ASAP. Flower, I wanted to tell you that I'm going to be applying for the next Czech uh, cooking host on the show. So I might be coming back to the island for a little stint after all. The raspberry sounds good. Okay. Okay, so we really don't want this to cook onto the bottom of the pot. Yeah, I thought it would be a great idea. I mean, I'm super familiar with hosting a cooking show already. Familiar with uh, the coast of BC and how to cook all that food. I think it would be fun. Excited to see what happens from that. <laughs> Scat. Bippity boppity boop. Melted chocolate. That's how it happens. Just like that. Okay, so cook over medium low heat, stirring until mixture coats the back of a spoon. So I'm just going to focus on this. Because it's got to cool off after anyways. And then we'll melt the chocolate while we're whipping the cream. Good to go. This show, Scat, it is a news segment. So I don't know if you ever watch news segments where... They have a little cooking part of it. So I would be the host, but it's all pre-recorded. Yeah, hope to be able to watch it in the UK. I think they put everything on the internet from past broadcasts, so I don't see why they wouldn't. Or I would at least ask them for a link to be able to use, right? Just gonna move this over more so we can see properly. Yeah, like a Wake Up America tape show? Totally. Okay, I see a bit of steam coming off of this, so let's watch closely. Just do not bring it to a boil. Yeah, thanks, Sam. So there's a link from one of the previous features that we've had on the show. 
That's the link for what they're looking for. Okay. I think this is getting there just by what I'm seeing on the bottom of the pot. It's getting thicker. I guess this is just a way for us to like pasteurize the egg yolk. You're so good in the gig. <laughs> That's what I thought too. I mean, my friend tagged me. She's like, come back. I was like, I will apply. Let's see what happens. It's a good thing about having lots of friends there. There's so many options for staying. Friends and family even. Yes! My cupcake reviews are coming in. Thank you, Chris. That actually means so much. Gluten-free baking stresses me out. So when things work, I get so pumped. And Torino, we're actually just starting. Okay, this is it, I think. That's it. That's where we're stopping. Let's say this. When we start to see the foam, stop there. Cause see, it's starting to get thick. So now I'm gonna pour this out of the pot so that we don't scramble the yolk. Sorry that I didn't acknowledge you right away, but Mr. Slothman, thank you so much for the 14 months in a row being part of our kitchen crew. I also saw that you received your cookie box this week, which is also exciting. Hope that you enjoyed everything in there. <laughs> and I'm still loving that song. Guys, I missed the chicken wing song all week. <laughs> Hi, Riff Wools. How are you? Okay. Let us... I think we'll just pour this into a little bowl. Pop it in the glass bowl. Shouldn't need the whisk anymore. I'm just going to go grab a spatula. And then this is also gonna be the spatula I use for folding everything in. It's really nice and wide and flat, which is why I chose this one. But yeah, we basically just made like a custard base. easy enough and then the only thing i will say about this mixture is that you might notice as it cools it will want to like form a film over the top just kind of agitate it so that doesn't happen but we'll be using it momentarily done with this as well Hey, sounds good, Sloth. Thank you for popping in for that resub today. I love it. And hi, Squigs. Kate and crew. <laughs> Put it as my notification sound on my phone. Yes. But then I would end up hating it, Vian. <laughs> Song challenge myself. Okay, done with that. Now we will set up the incarcerum here. I think I'm gonna do pink today. I brought her back out. I'm feeling like it. Let's confuse some people. Pink love. You've never tried eggnog yet? Like not even store-bought? Why the heck not? Okay, my uh, mixing bowls are just clean in the dishwasher. Used one to make the cupcake batter last night. Used the other one to make my cream cheese icing this morning. The pink one, Bonk. 
back to it. I thought she needs a little love as well, right? That. This beater. How's everyone else's week going? I know mine felt like someone just turned fast forward on it. Went by so fast. Off to work earlier than normal. Sounds good, Bonk. You do you. Got good news, Vune? Nice! Congratulations! Okay, we're all plugged in. Yeah, that's such a good feeling. Work, 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 work. See me doing work, 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 work. That's basically us, hey, flower. Okay, next up. We're gonna whip some cream for the mousse. This is what makes it really nice and airy. So what we did three quarters of a cup in the custardy mixture. Now we're gonna do one and a quarter cup into here with a little bit of sugar. And I think this is where I'll pop the vanilla too. So one and a quarter cups. Yeah, the other thing about the news segment is I'm just like assuming that it's going to be like monetarily compensated, the work that you put in. I know they didn't mention anything in that article, but I wonder, hey? What does a news cooking host make? little bit more sweetness but as you can see like for six servings and only four tablespoons of sugar that's really not that bad tam tamago zake what is that we'll also do a drop of our vanilla paste Nice, Daph. Yeah, I saw that. Sorry I didn't uh, respond to your comment in Discord. You got the new Flame Boss, and you think the temp is more accurate even than the old one? That's always a good feeling. Good hint of vanilla in there. Tastes like love, really. Okay, let's get this whipping. Stiff peaks. And then I'll pop it to the side and measure out eight ounces of chocolate. And then why don't I give our little custard base a little stir? Is it egg sake? Ooh, you might be right, Bonk. Just stir this up. It'll also help cool it off as well. And yeah, that turned out really good. Really nice and smooth, which is what we want to see. Like no egg yolk curdles or anything like that and that actually doesn't seem like that much whipping cream for the mousse take our scale now we're working all in the spots and we'll do boom this was the max amount of dark chocolate I could buy. I literally nuked the bulk bin at the store. I was like, why is nothing coming out? <laughs> it's empty. <laughs> I think I overestimated how much I need, though. I did buy a bit extra because it looked good for baking. So that is...
eight ounces. And we will just pop that in Chef Mike. A nice slow melt. Also watching my cream. So we'll do what I usually like to do just so we don't burn the chocolate because that is a possibility is 30 second increments. 30 seconds, stir. 30 seconds again, stir. Like I said, that's how you don't burn the chocolate and then have the, the cocoa butter separate from the actual cocoa itself. So while we're waiting, Drink consisting of heated sake, sugar, and a raw egg. So close then, yeah. Sounds yummy, but like warm, yeah. So we don't drink eggnog warm, really. So same, same, but different. And then for folding all of this together, we'll need one more bowl still. Do a nice big bowl. Should we just finish this? Go to the sports shop and they have energy bars with high amounts of cocoa in them. At least yours does. Does that give you like a good caffeine boost? Okay, let's test this. So if you do this with the whips and then your whipping cream stands straight up, you got stiff peaks. I'll just go a little bit longer just to make sure that we have the maximum amount of structure that we can. So the softer your cream, kind of the more soupy and soft the mousse will end up. I'm gonna stop there. When I start to see it going a little bit like granular around the side of the mixer, that's when I usually stop the whipped cream. Cause then you're working your way towards butter. Oh, cocoa chocolate. Like hot chocolate? So that's good to just sit there for now. 30 seconds. Nothing so far. Again. Maybe I'll even do 35. So now, quick read through. I believe we're going to pop this into this bowl with the chocolate next. And then from there, we fold in the cream. But this mixture and the chocolate is going to be a little bit warm right now. So we're going to have to wait a bit, actually. Yeah, stir a third at a time of the whipped cream into the cooled custard chocolate mixture. Easy enough. So we literally need this like just melted. Come on in. Start to give it some stirs. See how it melts from the bottom up. Seems like a nice chocolate as well. And I would suggest like a higher quality chocolate if you're going to make a mousse with it. Put that to the side and again. Again. Eggnog is just for Christmas, I would say. I think it's available in the stores from like November all the way up until the end of December. But yeah, it's a traditional Christmas drink. Uh, I do make it homemade every year around Christmas time. So fresh whipped egg yolk with sugar, fresh whipped egg white, as well as fresh whipped cream. And then I sneak some spiced rum into it. We make a boozy adult eggnog. Cut the richness. The one that I made last year was really strong. It messed us up.
Bless you. Sam's a sneeze monster today. Is the sun getting you? You too, flower? It is really different making it yourself and buying it. Okay, so I think we're here on the temperature. I'm just gonna keep stirring this, use the residual heat to melt the rest. But yeah, look at that sheen. Thank you for the follow, Unobtainium. We're almost there. As well, doing this stirring is kind of cooling it off at the same time. But we want to be sure that it's completely smooth. No chocolate chunks left. That's what I think too, Flower. Yeah, the store-bought ones are like thickened artificially or have artificial stabilizers. Ours does not. So yeah, it separates, right? Is you get like boozy eggnog foam as well as just some boozy drink. Okay, I think we're here. Perfect. So that's what we're looking for. Look at that sheen on there. Now we're gonna transfer into this bowl because this is where we're gonna be folding everything together. Nice thing about this bowl is it's kind of cool, so it'll help cool everything off. We'll give Samo the chocolate bowl to clean. Boom. Shine? Sheen? S-H-E-E-N. The sheen. That's from the cocoa butter. Oh, now you have a chocolate dog. Chocolate dog. Now from here, we can mix this in. This was what? Four egg yolks, two tablespoons of sugar three quarters of a cup of cream. I think that helped cool it off a lot having the cold glass bowl. That's a pro tip for sure. It's transforming. Whoa, the chocolate almost like hardened onto the bottom of the bowl. I gotta go fast. Holy shnikey. We almost didn't make it chat. It's like feeling the bottom of the bowl with the spoon. It's like hardening on. You definitely don't want chunks in there, right? I might give it just like a 20 second little heat up. Just want to show you. You don't want to scrape that in there, right? <laughs> Look at the... Ended up with a little chunker right there on the spoon. Okay, just a little bit more heat. But at least we know it'll cool off quick. Wow, wow, wow. The worst thing you can honestly do though, is like, this is not the worst thing. The worst thing you could do is originally overcook your eggs and then have to start over from there. Hoping this fits in the micro. Okay, so just a couple seconds to loosen that chocolate off. Sounds good, flower. Thanks for stopping by today. I hope you and the fam have been good. I'm kind of scared because I don't want to like cook it again. 
Just take the chill off the bottom of the bowl. A little bit longer still. Looking insanely good already though. Back it up, pup. Anyone else's dogs like the smell of chocolate even though they can't have it? Oh ho 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 ho! That would be good Westward. White chocolate mousse in a dark chocolate cup with raspberry drizzle? Yeah! I like all those flavors together. Mousses are just like special. For them to be good, they need love. Can't be like a, just a store-bought mousse. And as you can see, like it's pretty basic process and ingredients too. Okay, that did it. So now I'll just kind of swipe it up on the side of the bowl to help it cool off quicker. Set it aside in a cold spot and then we'll come back to this in like five minutes or so it's not gonna take long done with that i'll go give my hands a little rinse we will i know who can have these who who can get it get it <laughs> okay higher come here okay get in the chair we can't see. Get it, back it up. Oh my gosh. She's a crazy cream dog. Okay, good job. Thank you for your pre-rinse services. And then I'll do a little rinse a on those mousse cups. First thing on the list, Dunzo. We're crushing it today. How do you get on the wall? Uh, we do that during subathon. What is it? I think it's five or 10 gifted subs during our subathons, and that's how you get on the wall, Mickey. Because if I did it all the time, then it would just be like going on forever, I feel. Okay, put a couple things away while we're waiting. Always clean up before you start the next process. Unbox these. Those are like baby moose cups. I even have a spoon that we'll be able to eat with. Westward Dreamer! <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for three months in a row being with the kitchen crew and using your Prime Gaming sub. Uh, hook it up to your Amazon Prime and you get one free sub on Twitch a month. Gotta love that. The pizza toy? That's Mr. Pepperoni. When we do uh, traveling streams, we usually take them with us. I put them in the suitcase. So he's come to New York with us before. He went to TwitchCon in 2019. That's Mr. Pepperoni back there. He keeps me company if no one else is around. What just happened? We got a resub, Renor. Okay, I'm gonna do a quick rinse up. 
I will be back momentarily. I just want to wash those little moose glasses. And then we should be able to fold the cream into the chocolate. Whoa. What are you doing, dog? Did you trip? Did you trip? Are you okay? The cream has you crazy? You can't hear me. I think that might be on your end. Unless someone else can confirm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I know sometimes it's so easy to just hit the mute by accident and watching a stream. I don't think it's me. Maybe they said the, or maybe they meant to say they can hear me. What else am I gonna put this moose into? I don't really have any other smallish bowls or anything like that. I guess maybe just a mason jar would be nice, right? <laughs> yeah, Mickey, when you had wine, why can't I hear anything? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Crisp and clear, thank you. These are nice. They're so shiny. Do this again. Shiny chocolate bubbles. Hi, yeah. You must not know my chat then. They are so defensive of me and they will always help out. Can't prank Kate. You silly willy. I've been doing this for too long. <laughs> okay, another little stir. So some slight warmth, but the stirring will help cool it off. So let's keep going a little bit more. And then you know what else might help as well? Is just popping the bottom of the bowl up off of the wooden board. Let the air flow under and cool it that way too. Okay, I will be back momentarily. I'm just gonna let this cool for a couple more moments and I'll take a bathroom break now. Might as well fit it in. BRB! Back, back, backity back. <laughs> Feta complaints. Thank you. Boom. Okay, I'll have to grab a couple jars from outside and then we'll be good to go. 
So, where did I put the spatula? Right here. From our custard pot. Just wiping it off a bit. This is the one. And this is why these types of French desserts do cost like a bit of money, right? It's because they take time. You do something, then you have to wait and let it cool. So all these different processes. Okay, let's wipe this off now. I'll try this. I'm not scared. Mmm. That's good. <laughs> yes. Goat cheese tastes good too. We are going to have some goat and cow feta tomorrow on our lamb burgers. I shouldn't have dipped this in, but it's fine. These are all going to the same place. So about a third of the cream at a time, they said. And then we're going to go fold, 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 and more. Fold, fold, scrape the side. And then fold. <laughs> I just honestly love how it looks at this stage even. Like marble. Are we making art right now? We might. Mish says hello. She's visiting her mom, so won't be here today. Thank you for relaying the word, Dust. She knows that she's got to be here tomorrow. It's feta day. Feta day on Cook with Kate. Okay, keep going. Fold. Fold. So I'm rubbing the spatula against the bottom of the bowl and then coming up and just flipping stuff onto itself is how this is going right now. Honestly, we might just leave it a marbled chocolate mousse. Looks so good. If anyone's ever had Stracciatella gelato, this is what it's reminding me of right now. That's it. We did it. That's how you do your scrambled eggs. Fold. Scrape and then fold. Okay. So now... We just have to work on making this one fluid mixture without taking all of the air out. Sounds easy enough, right? I'm gonna just use my finger to scrape some of this off of the spatula. Keep going. Scrape the side of the bowl while I'm at it. We're almost there though, friendos. It's looking smooth as well. I'm not seeing anything granular which is really important. Uh, chocolate mousse was the dessert that I made during my culinary school competition that I won. So when I said I like took many hours perfecting it, I really did. 
I'm stopping there. This is how it should look. Ferrero Rocher Gelato. And then we need a spoonful. Yeah, you could add liqueur as well to your mousse. I'm just going to try it first and see how we did. Looks beautiful, though. Mmm. That's delicious. Creamy, chocolatey, not too sweet. Like, just the perfect dessert. Why is that so good? So good, so simple. I honestly think for all other chocolate desserts, like this is my favorite chocolate dessert. Now that I've had it again after so long, it's really delicious and like not heavy. The only thing I'm kind of missing is some crunch. So I do have some cocoa nibs that we can like sprinkle over the top and garnish with. And then I also realized like when we did the whipped cream, we should have done extra so that we could top it up. You don't need it, but it goes nicely together. So now we're going to try our hand at uh, filling these little mousse cups. I don't know how that's going to go. Might have to put it into a piping bag. It's so good, Bonk. This. Where is my baking bin? I'm just going to put like nothing in this. I don't need a piping tip, but I'm going to use it so that I don't mess up the sides of the container. Literally just like dip the tip of the piping bag into there. That would be so good, too. Coffee chocolate mousse. Mm. And Suki, how's your day? So only put enough in here that's going to fill up the cups, right? Nothing extra. And then as you can see, it's a bit soft right now, but it's going to get more hard as it cools. Not going to be like as soupy. That's why you always make your mousse first and then let it chill while you're finishing the rest of the food. Whoa. Then pretty risky business what I'm doing right now. Kind of terrifying myself even. <laughs> what if I can hold this up? There we go. Twitch mobile, please. What's happening? Okay, so now flip this up. You should see how the dog is watching me right now. Very intentive. Or very attentive. Greek, how are you? Okay, ready? Let it just pipe into there. And then have the other glass nice and close. You can transfer right into it. I'm gonna stop there. This is Marilyn's response. For the cupcake? Yep. <laughs> Just send the empty wrapper photo. Ethan's video is funny. Bye.
Boom. Okay. Flick it into this cup and then we'll fill for the other three. Stay. But look at it. They're so light and really cute. Like nice bite-sized portions, right? Far gone. Thank you for the follow. Tap the glass. Oh, to, to even it out. Good one. Well, some people like the little sploot though. Like, I like how some of the swirls look. You are doing pretty great, Greek. Oh, that is good news, my dude. Okay, is this gonna be able to stand up? It's really scary. So does that mean, Greek, that you're all, you're feeling better? You're on the mend? How long would this hold sealed up? Like the mousse in a container? Would say the recipe says three days. Stay, don't fold over. And that's probably pretty accurate. Just because of the whipped cream in there, that's what's gonna go on you first. <laughs> Sometimes the things that I do to myself Got the truck working. Your wrist is basically back to normal again. Oh, perfect. That is really good news then. Go, go, go. It's so light feeling for like how heavy chocolate actually is. Fill it up, and then the extra we can just squeeze back out of there. Yeah, this probably wouldn't last the week, just like I said, because of the fresh whipped cream. Maybe if it had a gelatin stabilizer in the recipe. I've made some mousse before that has a sheet of gelatin in it. You'd throw it in with the cream and the eggs and heat it up to activate it. And yeah, if you want to even out the top, how it looks, give it a couple taparoos. Good to go. Okay, I need a couple more cups here. Got any jars handy there? No. Okay. Quick little run out here. Astra, you gotta check it out. Let's go. Oh, she heard the squirrel. <laughs> Dog goes like squirrel? Squirrel? One, two, three, four jars should do it. Okay, girl, let's go. These are my favorite jars to use for different desserts and stuff. 250 mil mason jars. Diamondless, you think it's time? Oh man. Okay, we'll have a good rest of your day. Thanks for hanging out the first part of stream. Thinking if you make it Renor, dessert for day two, of course it depends on the season. It would for sure last two days. Might even need a, a third jar here. Might as well have it prepped and ready just in case.
Insane. Now, scrape the spatula so we can get all that in there too. And then next up, it's chicken time. I'm sorry, doggo, you can't. She's like, I will, auntie. Hmm. Tap, tap, tap a -roo. That's it, chat. We made it. I would say that's a good uh, six portions. What? What was that? Was that a sneeze? Chat, I'm worried about my husband. Chat, my husband needs help. Somebody send him help. I'm just rinsing out the piping bag ASAP so that the chocolate doesn't dye the nice white bag. Because that will happen. Especially cocoa is like the worst. What a simple but delicious dessert. Man, that was so easy. So heckin' easies. So now we just pop the lid on the jars and hi, Williams, as well as Farby. Welcome in, friendos. I hope you are keeping well. Yeah, we are. I'm doing A-OK, -okay, I would say. Locking out with some pretty nice weather lately. And then this is all we're gonna do with this. Just gonna take our container. Jars in our moose cups, and we'll put those to cool in the big, big fridge. Pop the lid on. Oh, it's in the way of the lid there. Sussing it out. Boom. Awesome. Whoa, they slide around a bit, so just make sure that they don't tip over. Okay, so next time I go back that way, we'll pop those to start cooling. Just gonna go in the fridge right now. Sorry, girl. Hit you in the head. Grabbing our bacon, our mushrooms, onion, more chickens. Getting ready for the cocoa van, as well as the stock. Okay, girl. I still gotta grab some carrot for the chicken dish. Yeah, we got this vacuum sealed. They still got like a little bit of frost on them, but that's okay. Two legs, four wings, and then we'll take the legs off of this whole chicken too. And that should be good. Went for a nice long bike ride today. I shed some winter weight. Almost died, yeah, in the best possible way. I believe it. Okay, so chicken, bacon can all go in this for now and just sit aside because we have some things to prep up first. We have to peel the pearl onions, which are those babies. Dice up the mushrooms, dice up some carrots, get some herbs in our life.
What is happening, Grief? Is your internet all messed? Yeah, we'll blanch, or at least we'll get a little blanching station just set up on the side here for the onions. So traditional, I love it. <laughs> I know, Bonk. Do not attempt to peel pearl onions dry. No, that's a nice chicken. That's a nice uh, halal chicken is what we get here. Our ducks are way bigger than that. Pretty typical size of a Canadian chicken. Okay, so I'm not going to be using all of these pearl onions. Probably only half of them, let's say. Yeah, that'll be good. Half of these. So just trying to see the size of the pot. So I'll fill this with some water and then we'll get it boiling for us. Why halal? Because they're raised better and butchered properly. And sometimes that's all we get here. Halal chickens, yeah. Uh, we have been getting a three pack of the halal chickens, Williams, whole from Costco. Last time we picked up three, it was $34. Really, really nice. I don't think I will get any other type of chicken now. Okay, so they said to prep these by making a little X. Let me read this. Trim the ends off of each onion, score a light X into one cut side. Okay, so they're saying to just tip and top it then. Add onions, cook until the outer layers are soft, about one and a half minutes. Okay, easy enough. Let's grab our couple knives and away we go. Yeah, they're not the cheapest, but they're huge. Should snag them for the smoker would be so nice. That's okay, Renor. No one is making you eat halal. And hi, Green Fang. How are you? So try and choose onions that are all kind of similar size too. I think we'll go with that amount. And we'll save the rest of these for something else. What, Williams? That is huge news. You got into law school? I remember when you were mentioning, did you mention to us at a time when you were like taking tests and stuff? Why do I feel like that was a thing? That's massive. And hi, Westward. Okay, so tip and top these while we're waiting. Just like the smallest amount, right? Still want the most usable onion. So Williams, are you uh, going to school where you're living or do you have to go somewhere else for school? You are studying for the LSAT, right. A little too late for last year, that's right. But now you got in. So are you starting in the spring then? Oh, I kind of peeled it already. I don't know. These are kind of peeling up on their own chat. I might not need the water. 
I'll just keep doing this. Let's see how far we get before the water boils. No, I spoke too soon. This one is giving us a run for our money. Okay, so from here they said to make a little X. So I'm going to just hold the onion like this. Do a small little X in the top with my knife. I'm sure you couldn't even see it. But this is going to help us peel the onion later. Once the skin has been softened just a touch. I think it'll also kind of help it cook a little bit through as well. Not a bad thing. Fargon, yes. A concasse tomato is always nice. Basically the same process as what I'm doing, but you do it with a tomato. It's so satisfying for whatever reason. Ooh, these are kind of strong too. They're making my eyes water. And never more. I hope I'm saying that right. Thank you for the follow and welcome in. Okay, so pop those to the side for now while we wait. I'm just going to leave this one out, right? Maybe we'll get a small container to put those all into. Get a stack. I don't have to keep coming over. I just drop the stack. <laughs> just do that for pouring. Now we can dice up our mushrooms next. So these are cremini mushrooms. As you can see, I already used some of them earlier this week. I made some leftover brisket and mushroom pot pies. We had for a nice little dinner. It was really good. I'm just going to use this towel that I put in here to rub some of the mushrooms, just some of the dirt off. Yeah, you don't realize how dirty they are. Start in September. Yeah, long wait, but exactly. Time to save up and just get yourself organized. Then come time. No excuses. Into the business world rather than criminal. Okay, so... One of our really long-term viewers, Williams, Dark Elvin. He is a pretty big business lawyer in New York. We've stayed, we went and stayed with him when we traveled there. So yeah, if you maybe need like an ear to talk to you, he would be a great person. Bye Greek. Thank you for stopping by. <laughs> Greetings, Greek, Greco, Greek. He has left us now. Okay, so these, we're gonna quarter up, I think, or cut into six, depending on the size of the mushroom. If it's really big, cut it smaller. You found chanterelles today? Like at the store, or do you forage for them? And then just to put the mushrooms into something, we'll just pop a bowl here. And I think, so all of the stems on these are good. We don't have to remove the stem at all. This is what we're going to look at first. So go in half, and then I think we'll go into thirds. Because this will shrink down a bit. And then I know that my brother doesn't love mushrooms, so at least he'll be able to pick this out in the big chunks. Hi, Mish. 
You forged them on a walk. So cool. Yeah, I've done that before too. It's so satisfying, right? It's like, what? Just like picking this in nature? Yeah, I don't even know if I've ever met anyone that has an allergy to mushrooms. <laughs> Tell him, Bonk. Mish just popping in for a quick visit. Hope you had a nice time with your mum. How does Finn feel about mushrooms? I think she likes them. I'm quite sure that she is okay with them. She doesn't hate a lot of things. Just she has a couple intolerances, that's all. Yeah, if she didn't have the intolerances, I'm pretty sure we could literally feed her anything. She's really good about trying everything once before being, like, grossed out. Just washing my knife. Little rinse a -roo. Dosh is your purpose in life. Swilliams, Williams, when you were a kid, foraged with your grandpa in northern Saskatchewan. Hey, I didn't know that mushrooms could grow there. I just learned something new. Thank you. And hi, Blondie. How are you doing? Yeah, you can complain today, Mish, but you can't complain tomorrow. We're going to have feta all over. Wasn't like the frozen north, yeah. Just a super hot day in the forest. As long as they have like the right moisture and heat. Yeah, mushrooms can grow in a lot of places. Why they're so magical. Just wiping up the mushroom shrapnel before we carry on. Put that to the side. Where are we at next? So I didn't butcher the chicken yet. Maybe I'll do that while we're waiting here. Uh, mushrooms, check. We're just getting ready to blanch the pearl onions and then we'll peel them. I'm just waiting on the water. We can still do, yeah. So we'll do butcher chicken next. We'll just take the legs off of the one carcass. And then from there, we can cut up the bacon. Start working on some lardons. I think I'm just gonna make the bacon lardons in the Dutch oven first though, before we start searing the chicken. I don't wanna make too many extra dishes today. I need this up a little bit more now. <laughs> There's only one place Feta truly belongs, in front of Mish, so she can eat it. Oh man! <laughs> yeah, Williams, unfortunately they were the wrong kind. Do you remember what you picked though? this entire container over this I'll open up this bag as well since it's a bit frosty still and then let's grab a boning knife so doggo you don't really love the chair here then I'll take it away she just likes to lay beside me now that is fine if we don't need chair, I am okay with this. Oh yeah, you are really young. All good, my duder. Okay, so two chicken legs and four wings. Remember, this was the leftover from our chicken parm adventure last week. Our water is almost there. Watch out, girl. I 
right now. I will try and reuse this back bag if possible. That might not even be possible. But I do try and not waste plastic if I can. Yeah, you only like mushroom soup. Like blended version, I'm sure. Get the string off first. And like I said, we're only taking the, the legs off. I think I might toss the rest of the chicken left over just into some buttermilk. I have extra buttermilk in the fridge. A little buttermilk marinade. Nevermore, did you take culinary arts and following a recipe? Yes. Yeah, I graduated with honors from a two-year full-time program in 2013. Been working in the industry ever since. That's a duck in color. It has really nice dark meat on the legs. Yeah, you're not wrong. But yeah, ducks are way darker. I don't know why you keep saying that, Renor. <laughs> are your ducks chickens? So we just cut along the side here in between where the leg separates from the breast. Boom, give it a little pop. Try to work under the hip bone. There we go, to find the knuckle. Now it's just one nice slice. Just like that, chicken leg. And yeah, when you're doing a braised dish like this, would really recommend skin on bone in pieces. It'll just be so much more forgiving. I really would not recommend if you have a boneless, skinless chicken breast, do not make this. Yeah, like making your own mushroom soup is something special too. One of the like, Greatest tricks I ever learned from this lady that I worked with is putting tarragon in cream of mushroom soup. Just like takes it to a whole nother level. Okay, just going to give my hands a little wash up. I think I'll leave the knife here. I just want to fix my bag so I can put the rest of this back in there. BRB. Worked out as a meat cutter for a year, thinking of taking culinary. Would you technically be a step ahead? A bit, yeah. Just for like the, the proteins course, I would say. For sure, because we do like a whole month. If you're going to take a similar program, you do a whole month on like meat cutting and butchery, stuff like that. So for sure, you should ace that. But otherwise, I only felt like I had a step ahead because I worked in a restaurant for six months prior to going to school. But people go to culinary school for all different reasons. Like it really does teach you a lot of good basics. And some people in my class, that's all they were there for, just to be better cooks. That's allowed if you can afford it. No cross-contamination. Good helping, doggo. Good helping. Yeah, creamy tarragon sauce. That's pretty impressive, Green Fang. You made pho once. Woo, almost dropped the bag. Now I'm just gonna pop this back in here. I'll just put it in the fridge for now. Next up, we're gonna chop some bacon. 
I'm just gonna wash my hands prior to that as well. As I walk on by. And then we are gonna get started here momentarily cooking, finally. We did our mousse, now we don't have to think about it. Now we can work on lunch. Easy enough. I might even do it in the oven, the braising part. That way we can do our mashed potatoes and stuff while that's going. And what, I still need to grab a carrot? This is just Alderwood smoked bacon. Can't wait. Next week we're getting a pork belly chat so we can make our own bacon again. Wahoo! It's been too long. What are you hoping to learn from school nevermore? So these lardons will go like almost an inch thick, three quarters of an inch thick slices, because these are going to shrink when we cook them, right? I'm going to have a bit of bacon substance. You can just fluff this up so it doesn't clump in the pan. Yeah, I think we'll fry this bacon off first in the Dutch oven, get some fat into there. And then from there we can sear the chicken next. And then it's carrot, mushroom, onion, I believe. And then we bring it together with a stock and the wine and all of the other goodness. We don't, Williams. Yeah, we tried it for what? About a month or so when it first came out. And then we sent it back before the 90 days was up because it was actually just a piece of trash. But we picked up this newer one. I don't know if you can see it behind me from the business Costco. It's an Italian made oven. Works so good. Wow, unobtainium. Thank you for all of the emotes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, now I'm gonna go wash up this stuff. No cross contamination allowed. Oh, I would say it's cheaper to get meat directly from a farm, but then you're usually stuck buying more at a time from a farm compared to just buying it from the store. You can just buy like small portions, right? But typically farmers like to sell like kind of meat packs together a bunch at a time. It is so sad, Swilliam. Is that a Nova oven? I don't know who they designed it for at all like maybe a home cook but even at that it doesn't make sense so yeah this new one that we got fits half sheet pans perfectly three of them in there like the innova oven couldn't even fit a half sheet pan seriously would not recommend it to anyone so i don't know how babish is endorsing that i'm sure they just maybe paid him off which is a shame a bit but i would not endorse that like just hearing horror stories from other people that use it, like starting an electrical fire in the kitchen when the steam container leaks into the panel. It's like, oh my God. That's crazy, doggo. Yeah. What if you come over here? What if you come and lay down over here? Yeah, you need a deep freeze if you want to buy from the farm, <laughs> totally. Okay, just putting this to the side, we're going to blanch our onions. Yeah, you leave that. You leave it. Leave it alone, doggo. We're boiling, so what did they say? One and a half minutes or so?
no splashing. I'll do a minute. Minute to win it. Butchered the chicken. Yeah. Okay, biggest Dutch oven. Grab that down while we're waiting. Sorry for the salmon. This is the one though. That's the one we're gonna use. Oh, as well, I'll grab some garlics. Need that. I think that's it. So really, we didn't need this extra onion either. Just grab a spoon to fish those out of there. Do you think we'll do any hikes this summer? Oh, I would love to. I really like hiking and as well biking, right? Like I know Sam was talking about starting to ride his bike to work in the summer and I would maybe meet him halfway or something like that. But I love hiking. It's one of my favorite things ever. Gotta go explore this area. Hi, Lauren, as well as Scaramouche. Would you or have you ever butchered an entire cow slash deer? I've never done whole versions of that because typically those animals are actually split in half. It's easier to butcher a side of something is how they call it than doing it whole because it just like kind of sits nicer, stuff like that. So I, in culinary school, I did half a cow, half a pig, half a lamb, and I've never got to butcher any venison yet or any yeah, game animals like that, but hoping to for my friends on the island next year when we have the truck. Let's turn this off now. This is all good. Let's unplug this. Lauren, well, don't like push yourself to a spot that is too serious and then if when you actually need help you can't go anywhere you know like that sounds a bit scary and hi fcb how are you So amazing, Williams. Yeah, you hung it from the roof. <laughs> Epic. I mean, with the rising meat prices, right? It's gonna pay off if you can source your own meat like that. Okay, so what if we do this? As we peel these little onions, we'll just pop them into the mushroom container. Should only need the first couple peels. Awesome. Look at how much easier that is. And then obviously don't put the peel in the mushrooms. Woohoo! Hello, Mike. Lauren's gonna be snowed in. Uh-oh. Hunker down, friends. Stay safe out there. I think we also have some snow coming maybe tomorrow, actually. Sometime. Really like lamb, but the flavor is a bit too mild. Any suggestions? You can try mutton, which is just like an older version of a lamb. So the flavor is going to be more gamey. Yeah, don't play games with your pancreas. Like you literally only have one. You're crazy. Yeah, that is also true. Yeah, it's so scary to go to the hospital, like if you're going by yourself. Hello, Audrey. Okay, I have to ask. I popped in. 
Audrey, I popped into your food bee segment yesterday while you were making the cocktail and pouring like gin almost all over. How did it go yesterday? I didn't get to watch to the end because I ended up doing some catering stuff. Aren't pearl onions typically used for cocktail onions? What's a cocktail onion, like a pickled version? Yes. And then they're very traditional in French cooking as well. That's why we're using them today. So there's our pearl onions and mushrooms. Let's smash some garlic cloves. Yeah, we are cooking up some lamb tomorrow as well. If you're a lamb lover, we're going to make a burger. We're going to fresh grind. I believe Sam picked up a leg, a whole boneless lamb leg. So we'll butcher it up and then grind it up with our attachment. Fresh ground lamb burgers in our life with the biggest chunk of feta. And yeah, lots of tzatziki too, like Cookie said. I think that's also the first time I've ever heard someone say lamb is like a mild flavor. Typically, I hear people say like, oh, lamb is so strong, like I can barely eat it. There is no bone in it, Scaramouche. It was just a boneless lamb leg chunk or roast, let's say. And I'm going to put the garlic in like just kind of whole smashed like this. It'll braise up really good. Surprise uh, roasted garlic cloves in some bites. Whoa. Garlic needs some extra love, that one. A bit of trimming, if you will. Perfect. Imagine Sammy walking in with a big leg club of meat bone. Yeah, yeah lamb legs aren't even that big. They're quite petite. Okay, onion, mushroom, garlic, check. Next up, we'll start frying our bacon bits and then I'll quickly go grab a carrot right now, actually. Go grab the carrot that we need and I will bring the mousse over to chill. It's been in a cool spot, but I would love to put it actually in the fridge. So yeah, we're set up. And then once we get the chicken braising, we just work on our Duchesse potato, roasted asparagus and sauce, that's it. Welcome back, Clemmy. And what is your Starbucks drink of choice today? Yeah, whole lamb legs at Costco. Every now and then they do have them. And then, Williams, have you seen the entire lamb hanging in the freezer section at Costco? Because there's also that. Yeah, if it were up to you, Green Fang, Greek salad would be like half feta cheese and half Black olives, yeah, Kalamata pitten. Mm. Yeah, they have an entire lamb hanging. It's insane. Okay, I will be back. And I'm just going to quickly mute while I do this because I know that it's going to cut out. Hold tight. Coco Vin is happening.
love how Astra just rolls in the kitchen first. Like, guys, we're back. Also brought some thyme back with me. And some nice, tasty, organic carrots. I think we'll just do a rinse on them. They, uh, well, some of uh, some of you may have seen me pick these up yesterday in our grocery shopping stream, right before it cut out. Yeah, we could all use a little time. Strawberry acai refresher lemonade with less ice. If you had an ice machine, you would get it with no ice. Yeah. <laughs> An Asian restaurant in your hometown had lamb as a protein option. Do you remember how they cooked it? Okay. Yeah, I'll just give these all a little rinse a Should we use all of them or maybe like three? We'll do three of these carrots. And then if we wash them, we shouldn't have to peel them. Do nice little cuts. Good job, doggo. Such a good helper. quick little dry off so they're not hard to cut, not slippery. So Dunkin' Donuts has like better snacks, you're saying, Clemmy, than Starbucks. But Starbucks has better drinks. Yeah, we only drink it because Sam gets some gift cards sometimes from his work that they win. Okay, so we'll tip and top these. into the compost and then for cutting i think we'll just do it like on the bias boom oh she's rolling just like this i'm sure the carrots like by the time this is all cooked they're gonna be quite soft but they'll be so flavorful because they've been cooked in the broth with everything for so long right so yeah not relying on these to be like perfectly cooked but they'll add lots of sweetness and flavor just complement the other ingredients and also just an extra veggie for us right so we can also pop those into this bowl because that all goes in together Oh yeah, lamb curry, I think, is like probably one of my favorite lamb dishes. For like a braised lamb dish, for sure. And then you have the rack of lamb that you just roast up. We'll just pick some thyme really quick first. And then we can finally cook. And I'll also get the oven heating up. Like I said, we're gonna... We're going to do a slow raise in the oven so that we can also work on the mashed potatoes the, the whole time it's cooking. How about take a vacation? And are you trying to say like don't drink coffee? That is like one thing that I make sure to try in different areas of the world though. But like not from a Starbucks. You go to the local coffee shops and support the local purveyors that way. <laughs> yeah, we need to start calling them out. Starbucks is saying that their croissants are made with butter. I don't know. Yeah, right, Torino? I'm actually so proud of myself. I've been doing so great lowering my coffee intake. 
And so I got my brother instead of like a latte, usually I have coffee with milk. I just had an espresso shot the other day. Me, oh my. What like a blast of energy and the flavor. But yeah, it didn't give me the shakes the same way as like usually I have the coffee with milk. Maybe it's the combination that my body doesn't like. Yeah, no, that is so true. Is we're actually born with all of the energy that we need. Coffee is like such an insane addiction. I've been reading up on it. And like most people don't actually expel the total amount of caffeine that they that they put into their body every day. So then you get this excess buildup and that's what causes anxiety and all of those things. It's like, wow, that actually makes a lot of sense. <laughs> what do you mean you don't want you don't want to go in just to get a cake pop? I've never had a cake pop from there. That's like one of the first snacks they started making, isn't it? The Starbucks cake pops, and then they started being trendy. Herbal tea, yeah, I'm gonna get back into that too, Lauren. Cause yeah, most other teas are like have so much caffeine in them, right? Okay, that is a very good amount of time. And it was all like pristine. I'll just give that a little chop. Open up some of the essential oils. Lemon and honey, yeah. Yeah, that is always unfortunate. Hey, Green Fang, when those like mom and pop shops, they close. No one wants to take it over. That's just like life though, right? Like Sam and I found out this week that the spot in Vancouver that we helped open in 2015, it's closed just out of the blue. Effective immediately. Restaurant and tap room shut down like wow so even if we did stay there we would be without a job anyways that's just how she rolls you drank coffee in high school see i didn't do that i really didn't start ingesting coffee until my 20s when i started working in restaurants give you the little boost you need to make it through your long shift, right? That's when the addiction started. Okay, I think we're ready. Move this off of the board and we'll do induction for good power right now. For cooking everything. And then for braising the chicken. I think I'll do the oven to 300 Fahrenheit. Just because it is a convection oven. So it's a bit more powerful than even what the Traeger is I've found. And yeah, those convoys, I don't want to talk about it, guys. I don't even want to share my opinion because, well, people on the internet can just be sus. Yeah, that is crazy, Clemmy. Careful with how much caffeine you ingest. Okay, getting into it. So, turn this baby on. And then we're starting by doing our bacon lardons. Yeah, you have an opinion? You're a streamer? How dare. Not that I care what, like, people think of my opinion, but I just don't want to be distracted and, like, start a convo that might upset some other people. That is my job as a streamer. I'm gonna put just a touch of oil down in the bottom here. 
Just because lately when we've been frying up the bacon, it doesn't have a ton of fat. And I don't want it to stick at all. And hi, Neam Regan. Miss when the suburbs had main streets, society basically pushed businesses away from the curb with giant parking lots in front. It's very problematic because when a big box retailer comes in town then leaves like Kmart and Sears in your town, it leaves the town looking blighted. Yeah. Meanwhile, in NYC, you see one business in a row, other businesses shut down for a few months. I've even noticed it here. <laughs> I love it, Torino. I'm always upset. I'm like the Hulk without anger. Where is it going then? Incoming bacon. We just need a spoon. So we fry the bacon first. Just pop it into a little container on the side. And then from there we sear the chicken so we can season the chicken soon. Yeah, that's why his username is green. Good one. I'm actually going to pop my little shim up on here, too. I always forget. What's up, Astra? What can I do for you? Are you all right? This was a good spot. This one over here. Come here. This is what? She's concerned because Samo is having a napa. She's like, are you aware of this? And I didn't sell any meals from our stream menu today, Mike. But I did make a 28 gluten-free carrot cake cupcakes with a vanilla cream cheese icing for one of Sam's coworkers. It's her birthday. So she picked those up uh, right before stream, actually. Yeah, it was fun. I've never made like too many gluten-free desserts, but they turned out really good. Yay, FCB! You got your cookie box. Awesome. Okay, this is getting hot, so I'm gonna put the bacon in now. And yeah, those of you receiving cookie boxes, let me know which one is your fave. Cookie said his was the gingerbread one. Done with that. Good sizzle when we drop this in. Give this a little swivel around. And so this will take a couple moments to cook out. Keep the heat pretty high as well. Turned it up. Looks like we just cooled it off a bit. Yeah, try and support local as much as possible. Although I will say there was times I used to live on Vancouver Island. Some things were very difficult to find. So that's where maybe sometimes Amazon would come into play. And hi, B Sultan. Thank you for the raid, friend. How was your stream? We're just getting into frying some bacon. <laughs> I need to pop up my light a little bit. There we go. What did you make today? Welcome, welcome. Hi, Claire. How have you been? So this is going to be the base for our Coco Van today, which is a French meal that consists of chicken braised with red wine, bacon, and mushrooms, and other tasty ingredients. So we're just bringing the entire mixture together, starting by frying up some bacon. And then next up, we will start searing off the chicken pieces to create some flavor that way. Been way too busy. That's what I feel too, Claire. Like, did someone just turn up the fast forward knob just, just a bit? 
just like enough so that we wouldn't really notice, but we question it. And thank you, Ben, for the 23 month resub. Ooh, almost at the two years. Hi, Helquin. Ben was making amazing Indian food. Oh, what were all the dishes? I wish we could trade foods today. Yeah, guys, go, go go follow B Sultan, go follow Claire Coffee, both amazing food and drink streamers here on Twitch. So that way you can check them out when they're live next. Oh man, chicken biryani, Segaloo, spinach potatoes, and a doll that is still cooking. Oh, <laughs> took a bit longer than expected. Sometimes that happens. Well, I hope it all turned out amazing. Yeah, so far on stream today, we have complete the chocolate mousse. It's already in the fridge, chilling on up. And yeah, we mostly did all of the prep for the cocoa vin. So we got our mushrooms, carrots. We already blanched and peeled the pearl onions, garlic cloves, chopped some fresh thyme. Dutch food is amazing. I haven't ate a lot of Dutch food. Would love to try more. I mean, that's part of why I stream so that we can learn all of these worldly flavors. Okay, so our chicken, I'll grab a pair of tongs and then I'm just gonna season it with some salt and pepper on the side. It will help make a nice crust for us on the skin. Tongs and salt and pepper. And so we have, just taking a feather out of one of the legs, we got four chicken legs and four chicken wings. Decided on like mostly dark meat for this, just because it yields the best to braising. Because I would be kind of sad if the chicken breast got all dried out, right? The bacon splashed my ear. Watch out. Oh no! You forgot to soak the split peas? That is always like the worst feeling in the morning. <laughs> I've done it before. Before a stream as well. And it's like, oh man. But sometimes you can do a little fast track in a pressure cooker if you have one. Like 10 minutes. And it'll at least get it like halfway cooked. Did you know you can ride a bike from Amsterdam into the suburbs? Yes, yeah. So I've been to Amsterdam and they do have a amazing bike path. I wish I spent more time there. So used to getting into your car for everything, but your best friend said he just rides his bike everywhere. So that's what Sam and myself did when we lived in Vancouver for three years. We did not insure the car at all. It just sat in the parkade and we just took advantage of riding our bikes as well as using the really good public transit and I love bike riding too so yeah I know that I would really love it there don't go now though what's going on Claire yeah last time I was there 2014 before Samo and I like settled down and started building our life together I think this is almost there let it fry up a bit more can get a touch of color too, right? Caramelization equals flavor. Wanna zoom in a bit even? There we go. Everything is closed down now. Hopefully we'll open up again soon. Yeah, I know. It's like, I really wanna get traveling again, but it's kind of impossible. Crack the pepper over the chicken first, and then we'll do our salt sprinkle. 
until you were 25-ish, yeah, you biked everywhere. I will say, like, coming out of the train station in Amsterdam, not the main one is where I was originally dropped, like, kind of more outskirts. That was the most amount of bikes I've ever seen locked up together at a time. And if I'm being honest, I have no idea how people told their bikes uh, like away from the other bikes because they all look the exact same. Like thousands, thousands of bikes. Canada would be so smart to do that. It's like slowly getting better here, but like still cars, cars are still the rulers of the road. Turn this up a little bit higher now that we've got most of the fat out. Get some caramelization going and we'll pour, we'll just scoop the bacon out into here. I think it was the Utrecht one. Because, yeah, I went in and out of Amsterdam Central a lot. Seriously, thousands. <laughs> I remember just, like, walk out with my backpack, and I'm pretty sure I just, like, stopped. I was like, whoa. <laughs> okay, this is really spitting. Watch your face. Yeah, just rose bonk. Okay, this is getting there. We're almost there. Chicken's going in next. The smells are happening. Ride in bike garages. Why not? Ouch. Splash on the neck. Yeah, Vancouver was quite bike friendly, I'm going to say, compared to like where we are now, is they have converted like literally some entire streets in the city just for a bike lane. It's amazing. Yeah, so we're starting to get stuff like that as well. Like the rent a bike services. I've I don't believe I've ever used one though. Friend Parker is getting involved in city council, wants Canada to invest in bike infrastructure, better public transport. So he can drive his new luxury car. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, self-interest for the greater good. Yo, as long as he's like making an effort. I think that's what matters the most. We're not all going to be perfect in the things that we do. As long as we try. Strain the bacon and now we have tasty bacon fat to fry the chicken in. This is big brain energy today. Got our tongs here, chicken ready to go. Careful because it might splash just being a touch wet. And then we're just trying to make the skin nice golden brown, right? Just searing it. I'm gonna turn this up to like 360 now. See how much we can pop into here. Maybe just three legs it looks like. Yeah, those are big chicken legs, hey? And then while this is going, we can get our red wine measured out. Make sure our stock is all happy. Mm, 
I'm being dirty. I know this looks gross because it's the fat cap that I mixed in, but this is a duck stock that was reduced. So I'm gonna use that. Kate is being dirty today. Yeah, thick legs, thick thighs. They look so good. And then I picked up like a cheaper bottle of wine yesterday. Don't have a ton of money right now. Well, we just got a big fridge. So I chose this one. It was five bucks off. Regular 16. I've used it before. Got it for $11. Apothic Red. So it's a blend of red wines. But I think it'll be really nice for cooking. Because it's got like good balance. So fruity flavors, mocha, vanilla. But not too sweet is what I usually go for. Oh, I even have to open it up proper. Okay, let's just have a peek. Oh. Yeah. Let's split this one. First one slipping. I think the recipe says two, two cups. Two cups of red wine. Chicken gizzard. I have had, and I've never had the gizzard. I've had like fried chicken hearts that are good. Two cups of dry red wine. And then two cups of gelatinous homemade broth, which we also have. Okay, it's getting a bit dark on the bottom there. I think the bacon sweetness. Don't let it burn. I'll just keep my eye on it. Just the sugar from the bacon here. I'm watching. I'm babysitting. Maybe we'll even flip that back over for a bit. But nothing is sticking, so that's nice. See? Still on the Vegas thing. <laughs> Gotta go back to Vegas. Yeah, fried chicken hearts. It's like almost like chicken nuggets if you do it right. Super high protein. Guys, I can't get into the wine bottle. Okay, I've got it now. I think. Hello? <laughs> I need help. I don't usually open a wine bottle like this, but sometimes you gotta say heck it if your original plan is not working. It would not, like, cut the foil around the side. Okay, now this cooled off too much. Please. Yeah, liver is good for you, Zizum. I don't, I don't love liver either, Bonk. will say like least favorite organ meat even though it is good for you it's more of like a aromatic thing for me than texture Ugh. the token sound yeah popping bottles Hey, what's going on over here? Now we're good. Okay, these other two are probably done. Yeah, good enough. Nice. 
It's actually insane how loud the searing is right now. It's like kind of hurting my ear. Last leg, and then we'll sneak our wings in. Notice how I'm always going skin side down as well. There we go. Steak with the clothes iron? No, I haven't. <laughs> are these farm raised chickens like from a local farm? No, they are halal. They're halal local. Pour this while we're waiting. <laughs> you did it with your sister? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, if you were in a pinch, I don't even know if I own a clothes iron anymore. <laughs> That's too good. Okay, that, anything else that we need? Should we take this big leg out? Nice, good color. Move that more into the center. Wings are working. The sounds and the smells in here are something else. Yeah, what is the appropriate steam setting? <laughs> Slight steam finish. Okay. Chicken, wine, onion, bacon, salt, and pepper, mushroom, carrot, garlic, thyme, bay leaves. See, I knew I was forgetting something. The leaves of bay. Keep using up this not so good pack. Oh, yeah, cookie. Prime rib was on sale for the first time in a while. I think they are going back down. We've noticed it. Like quite a bit, too. Do like four smaller pieces of bay leaf. Yeah, green thing, my mom said when I was young, I couldn't get enough of liver. But now that I'm older, I honestly can't. I can't do it. Is this good to flip? Oh no! We tore some of the skin off. It wasn't ready. It wasn't ready. Is it weird that you season ground beef with garlic powder? I don't think so. That sounds yummy. Yeah, chipotle Tabasco sauce. Yes, please. Oh, hi. You decided to join me. Were you, uh, were you cuddling with uncle? That's nice. Is he alive? Just wait. You are being cute with uncle? Your cousin said it's on? Don't listen to that nonsense. Okay, now we're going for the flip. We saved it. We saved the chicken skin. <laughs> yes. Okay, so what's the next step after this? Put all the veggies in and give them a little saute. Then the herbs, then a deglaze? Probably. Ground beef with tomato juice? That sounds very acidic. Mm. 
Yahoo! We didn't burn the fawn. Oh, don't do that either. Just centering that. And then from here, we can do this. We already made it, Mish. We made it at the beginning of stream. The moose. Where'd the chicken go? Ha ha ha! Why don't we season the veggies a little bit while we're here? Killer Ashley, thank you for the follow and welcome. Just a bit. No, don't even come into my stream saying convoy hype. You will get kicked out. We don't talk about political stuff here. We already had a conversation earlier. That will be the first and last time. Thank you. If you want to exercise your opinions, I would suggest going to Facebook. Now, we can stir our veggies up. Oh, the mushrooms were already frying a bit. Yes. Don't do it. Why are you saying WTF? I asked you nicely once. The second time is probably not going to be as nice. As a streamer, it is up to me. Thank you. To take care of my entire community, not just myself. You have had a small piece of roast pork, salted smoked ham hanging for five years? Oh my gosh. You need to start uh, slicing it up and eating it. Yeah, that's a good one too. Twitter is like the political social outlet. Holy he. Let those onions fry up a little bit. Mmm, this is the healthy part. Hi, Chris. Are you home now? You made it safe? Thanks, friends, for also uh, standing up for me, understanding where I come from. It's not always easy to be a broadcaster and, like, please everyone. The icing was good. Okay, I'm pretty serious about cream cheese icing, so I'm glad that you enjoyed it. And yeah, I'm so shocked at how good the gluten-free cupcakes were. Mmm, smelling some garlic roasting now. Yeah. That is fair, Kimrys. Yep, my stream, my rules. Hi, Earth Girl now. Hope you're having a good week. And thank you, Renor. It's coming together, isn't it? So next one, maybe we can even add this in a few moments, is just our fresh thyme and some bay leaf. That's probably it for this. Go a little bit longer. And I mean, the mushrooms aren't really going to disintegrate into this. They'll hold their, they'll hold their shape. Hello, Jota. For making gluten-free stuff, you're saying, Chris? Some advice? Uh believe in yourself <laughs> I've been using a one-to-one -one flour blend that is quite nice an eight-year-old salmon tail dried that sounds amazing stir this up once more <laughs> I 
I'm so proud of you, Clemmy. Thank you for the six months, friendo. So good to have you part of the crew. I hope that we have taught you something along the way. Niam, you're surprised whenever people say Twitter is political. Don't see anything political, but it could be the bubble you're in. Probably. I think it's all dependent on like who you follow and what you're into, right? And for starting out streaming or reviewing, pro tips? I mean, once again, I'll just uh, go back to what I originally said. First off, you have to believe in yourself. Because you have to have like some sort of confidence, I feel. Otherwise, streaming maybe won't be that fun because of internet folks. Otherwise, like I wouldn't suggest buying the most amazing equipment right off of the bat. Test out with some like cheaper pieces of equipment. Make sure that you like it first and then go from there. Now we're sauteing some of the herbs in here. Oh, dust. I protect what I love. <laughs> uh, what else for pro tips starting like streaming stuff like that? Just try and do something different, I guess. And something that you really enjoy. Because if it feels like work, you're not going to want to do it. Okay, the moment of truth is coming here right away. The wine pour. Yeah, that's insane. Logan Paul, 100 grand on a stream room. FCB, thank you, thank you, thank you, friends, for a thousand bits going towards our food truck fund. Yeah, you can handle the trolls. That's like me. So a lot of my viewers in the first year of streaming, they actually came in, originally tried to troll me. But then for whatever reason, they just ended up staying on our like amazing humans part of our community. It's the best. So yeah, if you can convert the trolls, good on ya. <laughs> and hi, KV the monkey. Sorry I missed you earlier. Just catching up. As well as broken toys, welcome. Yeah, if you're cooking, cook what you love. Cookie, thank you for 1300 bits. Friends, we're already at level two. Choo choo! Cameras with a 500? That's another true for you. <laughs> we already have a truck, Mike. Do you use Discord at all? We have some photos of the truck in there. It's just in uh, storage over the winter because it's too cold to work on it. I'm doing the wine pour. The deglaze is happening. Dust. Yay! Thank you, friend. 207 total subs to the channel over these years. Thank you, Dust. Yeah, that is a good one too, Williams. I mean, you've you've streamed before and you're also a viewer. Go with my homies. Okay, give this a stir. Now we're scraping the bottom of the pan. Still makes me giggle every time. That's how we know it's good, right? Okay, let's welcome everyone in. Welcome to the kitchen crew, Chef Peanut 808, Air Cruise 1, KV the Monkey, Simo Swanee 12, and Chi Delta. And thank you once again, Dust, for gifting all of those people a sub to the channel. Wait, did I miss a Fargon sub? 
Thank you for the prime gaming sub. Okay, I'm gonna turn this down. Let us add now. Let's not get distracted by chicken wings. We're gonna add our chicken back into here now. And then I'm gonna top it up with the broth. Thank you, Chris, for 510 bits. And yeah, you checked out the Incarceram. It is pretty legit, KV. I wouldn't have two for no reason, right? Pop this. Actually, I'll pop this on the outside and kind of nestle the chicken wings in the middle. Those are going to be lovely. All of these knuckles from the leg and the wings are going to add some body to the broth later on, too. And yeah, don't look at the numbers either. No, you didn't tell me, Dust. Did I miss anything else while we were being crazy here? Ms. Williams was just saying good audio is an important one. And I will say yes for that. So uh, going back to Mike. Is the truck that we have is a Chevy C5500. With a box on the back that is empty. It's 18 feet long and 8 feet wide, 7 feet tall. So you have to build out the entire box still. Hi, Apple Avocado. Now I'm going to start scooping in our stock. Let that melt over this. And then we'll kind of nestle everything else together. And then this will take... Oh, probably an hour and a half at least to braise. And then I'm actually going to toss it in the oven while we keep working on the potatoes and everything else. You can braise in the oven. Yeah, what a mix. Turn on the oven right now. And thank you for the level four hype train, friends. Choo, 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 choo. For all of you. Questions for me, Apple Avocado, please go ahead. <laughs> Green Fang, if you want recipes to accommodate special dietary needs, just ask Google. It's true. It's true. Okay. Turn this baby on. I'm gonna go 300 Fahrenheit. I'm gonna take out some oven racks before it heats up. And so one thing I have found with the oven is it's pretty loud at first when you turn it on, but then like once it gets to temp, it really gets quiet. Thank you for the amazing hype train, guys. I got all the level three emotes now. Oh no, apple avocado, probably just toss it out. Might wanna go get a new one. Not sure how to disinfect my toothbrush. Your sister came home yesterday with COVID. You might want to disinfect some other things too, though. Like the toothbrush is just the starting point. So we're just waiting for this to come up to a full simmer. Also just kind of mix the broth with the wine. Wow, wow, wow. This is going to be great. And yeah, we'll just let this simmer as the oven heats up. Oh. It was too much. Give me a sec. We might have to run it to the other side. We tested this earlier this week, though, and it didn't uh, blow the breaker. Give me a sec.
it's actually like I'm okay with these things happening now in the house compared to having to deal with it in the truck and not knowing what to do. So like by the time we're in the truck, it's gonna be effortless when things go wrong. <laughs> okay, we're back. Do you eat in your room? Well, it shouldn't your sister be the one that is quarantining though? If she's the sick one, that's kind of up to her. And then obviously for braised items, we definitely need a lid to pop on here when it goes in the oven. So have that handy. Just gonna get rid of some dirty dishes while we're waiting. Yeah, KV, you use Alexa in the kitchen all the time for timers, conversions, audiobooks. I like using my watch for a timer as well, just being able to talk to it. Use an alcohol wave? Oh, good one, FCB. Yeah, that might do it. That would probably do it. That's what wasn't supposed to happen. Nice. Okay, we're simmering. Next up is do chef's potatoes. Or yeah, soaking in hydrogen peroxide. You keep getting Camry ads? Why? <laughs> <coughs> Are you in need of a new car? <laughs> Toyota must be hurting. Yeah, sounds good. Hey, Bonk, change the brush head. Lysol wipe down the rest. You got it. Yeah, those bubbles, that's what we want. Okay, get in my potatoes. Yukon Golds, and then we'll need a pot to boil that. Good job, Bong. Those are such good suggestions. Okay, just dialing in this uh, simmer temp here. Is that too low? Usually I only like a couple of bubbles all over. I think that's too low. 270 it is. And then we can always do a little swivel around. Yeah, lonely disco dancer. Go grab some snackers. And hi, yeah, I'm doing good. How are you? How long does it go in the oven for so it will fall off the bone? I'm gonna say for simmering, an hour, a nice low simmer for an hour. I'm popping it in the oven at, maybe I'll even do a bit lower, 275 Fahrenheit. Just looking at the height here, should be able to do it. I can go one more lower for the rack. You'll come up with a sick gimmick before you start streaming or like a certain persona. I mean, yeah, but also you have to be yourself because people will see through the fakeness if you're like trying to uphold something that you're not. BB Bubs, my duder, how are you? And uh, I have to ask, how was that chili that you posted? It looked so good. And I know there was beans in there. So are you tooting it up a storm today or what? <laughs> <laughs> I 
And thank you for shouting out BB Bubs Cookie. So BB Bubs is another food and drink streamer on Twitch, also a former chef, just like me. Bubs, are you still looking for work where you're at? <laughs> yeah, yo, um, <laughs> a bit tootin' today, Kate. Well, we made chili, what, last week? So I feel you, honestly. That's why I had to ask. And Derp, you bring news. Please share the news with us. Is French food known for tiny portions? Mm, not really, actually. Just like thinking back to when I was backpacking through France. Not really small portions. Like just proper sized. So like you can just order a dish, eat it all, not be hungry, but not be like insanely full either. Looks like cooked duck. You keep saying everything looks like duck, Renor. Are you ducking around? Oh, you did one beanless and one with beans? And then what kind of beans did you use? What are we at here? Oh, oven is good. That's how fast it heats up, you guys. So this is how it should look simmering. Not quite actually as bubbly. Wait for it to go down. Like kind of a bubble more like this. Just kind of simmering, but not boiling everywhere and agitating. So now lid on. And we're going into the oven back here. We'll peak what? In like 45 minutes or so? Nice, bubs. Oh, white beans for a chicken verde chili. Love it. Okay, let me pop this in and I'll catch up with chat. In our very powerful oven. Please fit. Oh no. Oh my God, it just fit. <laughs> Slight bend to the oven rack. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna switch this while we do a little cleanup before we start the next one. So. Hey Siri, 45 minute timer. 45 minutes, counting down. <laughs> Blood hook. Yo, I'm just trying to catch up to your news, Dave. I just have to scroll up now. Chat's wild today. And yeah, these are my induction shims. Dax is officially off of oxygen. We'll be going back in two months. Might have the prong taken out. Nice. Not even three months weighs in at well over 12 pounds. That is great news. Thank you for sharing with us. Lauren, you just got to make yourself some good food. Yeah, foreigners get shook. Well, even Canadian portion sizes are still smaller than American portion sizes. It's so crazy. And thank you, Twitch Blackmore. Yeah, the brand of the Dutch oven, it's a little like less expensive than Le Crusade. I got it for, I think my birthday from my mom. I'm just gonna type it in chat for you if you wanna look it up. But the brand is La Serra. And that is the biggest Dutch oven I own, too. Boomer clipped you? Oof. Thanks for the follow. Welcome. I'm scared, kind of. Holy FCB zero Celsius where you're at in Florida? What is going on over there? And Chris, I spent, uh, I think, just a month in France. I did in 2014. I think I left Edmonton in March? I think I was there for my birthday, maybe even earlier. So went to Paris. One of my friends from culinary school was working at a restaurant in Paris, but it was during the season where they had holidays for the summer. So I just stayed in her apartment for like a week by myself. 
stopped in Paris and then went the rest around France. From there, I went to the UK, took the train like from Paris to London, which was insane. I don't see any dropping frames on my side, like not even a percentage. So it might be you. And then from the UK, I flew to Amsterdam. I'm just trying to recall it. it was a wild Amsterdam, then Brussels. Then from there, I flew to Milan and did Italy. Then from there, I went to Spain, took the train, and then I went home when I ran out of money. You have cooked your food on a fire oven the last three months? What? What kind of fire oven? You want to cook in France? Yeah, so the restaurant that my friend Hannah worked at, the owners were American. So I think that's how she kind of got her in. And yeah, I went there for food. Really, really delicious. Doesn't seem that hard either. And yeah, now she actually ended up marrying someone that she worked with in Paris and they have opened a pub in the UK in a place called, I believe it's pronounced USK, U-S-K, the Black Bear Inn, and they just won uh, top 50 best pubs in the UK. I'm so proud of her. Okay, let's get into this. Grab my pot. We'll start, we have to peel the potatoes for the Duchesse potatoes. How long was I in Italy? Uh, a month? So I did a month in basically like all of the main spots I did. So a month in France, a month or so in the UK, maybe only three weeks. A month in Italy, a month in Spain, and then just like a couple days in both Amsterdam and Brussels. I was so proud of myself on that trip is I made it like one thing to not take any taxis the entire trip, just walk and take public transit. And I actually was successful at it. I think that's probably enough potato or at least a good start. Mmm, the, the nor'easter in New England that's coming over. So you're getting hit with a bit of that. Oh, best thing I ate on my trip? Dude, that is so hard to come up with like one dish. I would say Spain was pretty special. I didn't know what to expect for the food there. But like I always tried to hit up the different markets and stuff and like all of the pinchos in Spain. So creative. I loved Brussels. Yeah, never drove there. Just walked around. But the streets are crazy. Yeah, it's all cobblestone streets pretty much. Really, really rough. Do not bring high heels. And yeah, Minnesota Taz. How did I get here and when did I arrive? <laughs> Welcome. How are you? How did your and Graham's cookie collab stream go? And guys, I want to say for another food and drink streamer popping in, I'm honestly like honored. Is Minnesota Todd's go give him a follow. Wait, you threw them out? What happened? Did I visit Nicaragua? No. Cobblestone streets. Is that the way to say it? Like it's all just like brick? on like really old and uneven. It's so fancy there. So 12 medium Yukon gold potatoes, about three and a half to four pounds. Let's just go by that. We'll just go by the weight. And honestly, even then, I'm going to go in half. I don't need to make eight servings of these potatoes. I'm only going to make four. So we'll divide the recipe in half. Chat picked horrible ingredients for you, but Graham's was much nicer. Oh man, I wish I was around. I would have vouched for you, Taz. 
Yeah, yeah, that is something that I always try not to do as well. Don't really like the streams where like you make something bad on purpose because then like it's waste. You're wasting your time. You're wasting ingredients. Okay, so let's say like two pounds of potatoes. Oh, that's it. To just make up for maybe some of the peel. Was that heavier or lighter? They're like literally the same. Okay, we'll do that. So I'll do six potatoes. Where is the pin you sent? It's just in the room right now, Dust. It's in the room with, uh, same with all of the stickers that Eric sent to us as well. Place potatoes in a large pot, pour in water to cover by two inches, season with salt. Bring to a boil, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, it is peeled. Oh wait. No, it's not. We're boiling these whole. Which means I'm probably actually going to trade this really big one for two smaller ones that'll cook more evenly. That's a big brain energy right there. And then we'll just lay these all in here. So they get boiled with the skin on. And then once they're cooked, we peel it afterwards. Sekil, thank you for the follow. Don't worry, Dust. I'm just waiting on my other apron and then I'm going to do another apron up with all of the pins. I didn't forget you. Craving some deep dish, Chris? Have you tried... What's the one spot here? By like wild or by three boards? What's the pizza place here that does kind of Detroit style? Cold water on the taters as well, friends. And then while we're waiting on these, we can prep some other stuff. But yeah, these get riced. These get put through a ricer, so they're nice and aerated as well. And then let's not forget to season the water. do this. Bring over the box of salt and fill up the crock at the same time. Chicago Joe's? Mm, nope. <laughs> Not that one. <laughs> we make the water taste like the sea. That should be good. You spent a long time finding that for me. I believe it, my dude. Many assaults. Okay, now I'm just gonna pop the lid on and we'll just pop those on the burner to the side. You don't need to watch the potatoes boil. It would take longer anyways watching it. So just boil them until they're cooked through and able to be mashed. I'm going to say it'll take closer to 20 minutes or so. You thought that was the name? It's a different one. Let me see if I can Google it. Not three boars. Oh yeah, the high dough. That's the one. The high dough. I'm a salt expert. <laughs> Here you're a salt expert. Yes, yes I am. Okay. Duchess potatoes. I want to read up a little bit on this too. Let's learn some stuff. Whoa. There is some history. Just turn this fan off too, because it's making me a bit chilly. This is for you, Lauren. Just a little sprinklage. So, 
Duchesse potatoes consist of a puree of mashed potatoes, egg yolk, and butter, which is forced from a piping bag or hand molded into various shapes, which are then baked in a high temperature oven until golden. They are typically seasoned similarly to mashed potatoes with salt, pepper, and nutmeg. They are a classic item of French cuisine and found in historic French cookbooks. They are so nummy. If you are someone who likes a double baked potato, very good. You can't look it up. Yeah, that's cheating, Kate. These potatoes, you've never had them before, Chris. So this is something that we did learn in culinary school. And hi, Katniss! Yahoo! You got your merch. I know Scooter got hers as well. If you're feeling brave enough, I would love to see a photo of what you got, whether you want to wear it or not. But I don't have all the colors, so I would like to see all the colors and like how the prints turned out. So like top of a shepherd's pie, almost. First known recipe for the dish was published in La Nouvelle Cuisinaire Bourgeoisie in 1746. The phrase a la duchesse became an appellation in French cuisine. Big words today, guys for any dish incorporating a mashed potato and egg mixture. Recipes for uh, Duchesse potatoes have been published in American cookbooks since at least 1878. During the Great Depression, the US federal government cooperated with a dozen state agricultural agencies to improve potato breeding. The U.S. Bureau of Home Economics encouraged consumers to try less common potato dishes, such as Duchesse potatoes. Interesting. So yeah, very traditional potato dish that is so, so lovely. So really, we're calling out Bon Appetit right now because they just put their potatoes into a casserole dish instead of piping it out. I guess if you're short for time, that works. But the proper way is you do put it in a piping bag. So that also means we will prep a couple sheet pans to pipe that mixture onto. Yeah, the eggs give them weight as well as like the structure on the outside. So it's gonna be crispy on the outside, but a really nice mashed potato in the middle. Yeah, that's true. That's true, Bonk. It is that time, but it is also fry -y. We know that you got some time off coming up. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Okay, thanks for hanging out with us while you had the time bonk. Yeah, happy working. Don't work too hard. Hope you have a good trip back and forth as well, and we'll see you tomorrow. Taters were a staple food during the depression until there was a shortage of them. Okay, so while these are boiling, Let's get some egg yolks. Oh, you know what? We're gonna sneak a little bit of, into the potato. Some roasted garlic oil. Potatoes, roasted garlic oil, and then we need some whipping cream and sour cream inside of there, as well as some melted butter. So we'll start getting all of that together. And I actually think before I even do that, I'm just gonna take another quick bathroom break. That way I can focus not go in the middle. Okay, BRB.
just had to check on Doggo and Samo. They're really cute, snuggled up together, napping. Sandstorms in the Midwest killed the taters, the tater farmers' crops, like during the Depression. You're saying? Okay, so a couple egg yolks again. Go grab the roasted garlic oil, cream, sour cream, butter, butter. egg cream and i think i have another egg carton in the fridge i'll grab yeah these are gonna be nummy and then once we have all of the potato stuff prepped we can prep the asparagus as well and maybe even start to think about the sauce that's okay if you make the sauce a bit early and have it warm hot holding I knew I had one egg in the carton. Makes and messes? Thank you for the follow. We make and we mess. So all we did earlier today when we were making our mousse is I just like to crack the whole egg into a container and then fish the yolks out from there. Oh, I think I will do three egg yolks for the amount that we're gonna make. I'll grab this container to measure the cream. So like I said, crack your egg right into here and then fish out the yolk. Fish in. Yeah, I haven't cooked like French style food in a while. Like, yes, maybe some basic techniques, but you always forget how long it takes to make these special dishes. Just go right in. Boom. Now we have a bunch. Oh, I cracked that one. I was going to say we got a bunch of egg whites to uh, make meringue with, but now that that happened, that is going to be impossible. Hello, can we save it? Boom, that should do it. RIP, I'm just gonna do a soapy water rinse. Hi doggo, did you have a good nap? Oh man. <laughs> just walks up, looks at me and yawns. Like, wow, you've been working hard today, hey? So we're having the recipe that I have linked. So just over half a cup of cream. Yeah, good food takes like hours, right? Well, I guess I can use a smaller container even. Okay, we'll use that to melt the butter. Do this, fill that halfway, and then we'll top it up with some sour cream. So five tablespoons of butter melted. Which I think I'll just kind of eyeball that. One. Two. Three. Do like 
like half. That's five. Sure. Oh, ho, ho, Mish. Mish is making moist sourdough at home. A blob of sour cream in there? I can imagine. Like a sourdough queen now. I'm loving it. Please keep posting all of your sourdoughs. Okay, so that will get melted. I'm just gonna do that when the potatoes are ready though. Otherwise it's probably gonna harden up. By the time we get back to that, we'll put our little bit of roasted garlic oil just on the side for now. Sneak a touch of that in. Put that under there. Get rid of the cream and I'll get some sour cream. Yeah, salted and smoked takes weeks or years for sure. And Bixby Tiara, thank you for the follow. Do I have merch? Yep. Is it going good with it? I would say. Is I've ordered some, Sam has ordered some. It is from Stream Elements, their merch store. And we also have a bunch of viewers in the community that have merch. And so far, everyone is really happy with it. Dang, Blood Oak, yeah. Yeah, you really need the high temp to be able to make a proper sourdough, unfortunately. Let's put this away. And do I have a sour cream in here or do I gotta go grab it? I think I gotta go grab it. Is that right, Doggo? You're being so cute. So I will grab that when it comes time. Okay, we can work on prepping up the asparagus now while we got time. <laughs> yeah, I'll just build a wood-fired bread oven in my garden. Our friend on the island, they have one on the property. We were gonna stream with it one day. But then we never actually made it back to there. I hope that one day we do, because it looked really cool. All of the asparagus. Doggo, how do you feel about asparagus? I give you the best part of it. Yeah, it's good for dogs. She's sussing it. She's corn on the cobbing. I'm just gonna cook all of this actually. I heckin' love asparagus, especially when it's roasted. So if there's extras, I will eat it. Yeah, wood fired, like the char that you sometimes get. It's special. Let's just move this off for now. Our taters are coming up slowly but surely. And now we are going to trim up the asparagus <laughs> so much. So one good way to test where we're gonna cut it is to hold the bottom as well as like the middle of the spear. Just like snap it. So that's where it broke. So if we kind of do a test, looks like we trim about two inches off for um, where this is super woody. You can use it to make like a cream of asparagus and potato soup and blend it, but then you have to strain it because there's a lot of like fibrous stuff in here. So yeah, if you want to save the bottoms, you can. Just know that it does take a bit of work. And yeah, sometimes they break and transport too. Just happens. Just take those out. She ate it. Yeah, Doggo ate it. Good girl. This asparagus is really, really tall. Go a little bit higher. 
And then all we're gonna do, lay these all out on a sheet pan, dress them with some oil, salt, and pepper, and that's it. Simple roast. We'll crank up the heat on the oven once the cocoa vent is out and done braising. And that will be able to roast the asparagus as well as the Duchesse potatoes at the same time. I'm hoping to have the bechamel at least started though before those two things go in the oven. So you just kind of have to finish the gorgonzola sauce. And yes, Lonely Disco Dancer. Thanks, Mish. Vancouver Island. Yeah, there are like many other small islands around Vancouver Island where people can live. So yeah, good to clarify. Samo and I never really made it out to the other ones though. That means we gotta go back, right? Just had a couple more apricot cookies. Starting to rethink your favorite, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I tried that recipe. Okay, one of the bottoms fell. Let's see, she'll probably like mince up the good part of it and then leave the woody part. <laughs> My favorite type of cheese is... I'm still thinking. There's actually one here in Alberta that is really good. Uh, have you ever had the Grizzly Gouda? So it's like an aged Gouda cheese that is like salty and hard. Really good. Or I do really like Asiago for like funk and creaminess. So I guess you can say I like the harder aged cheeses better. Okay, all of those bottoms. I honestly don't think I'll save. Doggo, you done so? Yeah, that's a that's a good job. You did good. <laughs> Look at she actually did really good. She cleaned out all of the juice part. Okay, now I'll wash my hand after picking that up. Good job, Doggo. You'll clean them up. Oh, we're losing them. This one might be good. Yeah, Grizzly Gouda, that was one that like kind of got into my life as we were leaving this province. But thanks for reminding me of it. Okay, quick rinse -aroo. Our potatoes are boiling now as well, chat. Three cheers for a doggo. She's eating her veggies. Good girl. And I don't even think I'm going to line the sheet pan for roasting the asparagus. Any triple cream cookie is a favorite of yours. Or a creamy blue cheese. Yeah, triple creams are really good too. Can we do these back to back? Will it fit? I don't think so. And I always try and spread out like one nice even layer when we are roasting veggies. Otherwise they steam up too much over themselves and go soggy. So spread it out the best that you can. You can always give them a toss midway roasting. What, you need a whole one? Okay, I'll give you this ugly one. Good girl. Okay, now we'll bring some olive oil over. Just turn down my potato pot here. She's rocking and a rolling now. And I will say the cocoa van is smelling very nice coming from the oven. <laughs> right. What happens to the cheese with each subsequent creaming? How is it creamed? <laughs> I don't know. 
Gouda or Swiss? Yeah. If it smells like feet, you like it. Totally. So like Gruyere for a Swiss cheese is so good, right? A cave-aged Gruyere. Always use a good amount of oil when roasting veggies as well. Helps them brown up, helps them from drying out. So we'll toss those and we'll do a bit of seasoning. I like going super simple with asparagus, nothing more than salt and pepper. Asiago and provolone, yeah, provo's a good one. Kind of like underrated almost. Really like provolone with like cured meat sandwiches. But it does have good melting factor as well. Paninis. Get back over there. Guys, I just had this deep thought. And you can lull at me if you want. But does, so since the dog ate asparagus, is Harpy gonna stink too? <laughs> this is where my mind goes sometimes. Gruyere croissant, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, Hell Quinn. I actually really like that one. Compared to like Brie, I do not mind a camembert. It's yummy. Yo, you know what I've noticed? Our token Googler hasn't been around. I might have to message Palooza, hey guys? Usually he's around like all the time. Go check up on him, make sure he's A-OK. -okay. Whoa. Wait, you forgot that piece. Clean that up. Clean that up. Or that's trash. That part was trash. Go, go, go. And yeah, doing like a pre-season on these. It's almost like a marinade that we just popped on there with the oil and seasonings. And if you wanted to grill them, you could dress them the exact same way. Yes. A Danish blue cheese. Mmm, with bacon? Yeah, I will say, like, blue cheese and bacon goes really good together. That's why we're doing a gorgonzola cream sauce to go with this asparagus. Because then it'll also complement the bacon in the coco vin. Oh, oh me oh my makes and messes. A brulee grana padano? What? <laughs> Let's wipe the board. Yes, it is good on pizza. Ooh, like a gorgonzola pear and walnut niche. I think we did that for a feature pizza before. Okay, just gonna go rinse my cloth. We are rolling right along. Maybe I'll give the potatoes a poke as well. See how cooked they are now. It is smelling insanely good. Holy. Okay, poke the potato. Not yet getting there though. Turn this back up just a touch. Asparagus. Just gonna cross it off because all we have to do is roast it. And then Take a peek at the Duchesse potato recipe and see what that bakes at. 425, perfect. That's what I was gonna set it to you for the asparagus anyways. No, I love getting on the cheese train. We are here for it. <laughs> You're fitting right in with our community, Chris. Yeah, Emmental is a good one too. 
Good suggestions, friends. Mish Paloozer? Yeah. It's been like almost weeks now, hey? Okay, I will send a message for sure. All right, so I linked a roasted asparagus recipe with Parmesan cream sauce for everyone, but we're just gonna switch out the parm for gorgonzola. How much sauce does this make? Six servings? I mean, extra sauce is not a bad thing, right? Blood Oak said he saw Palooza earlier. Okay, I didn't see him. Must be busy. And thanks, Chris. Yeah, Insta photos. That's my food portfolio. Yep, so we make this with a roux. Couple tablespoons of butter, couple tablespoons of flour to start, a cup, literally one cup of milk. And then they're saying three quarters of a cup of grated parm. That wouldn't be so much. I'll probably go like a quarter cup of the blue cheese just so it's not overpowering. And I think we're actually going to start that. Let's start the bechamel. Okay, right at the beginning. Yeah, it must be like locale, hey? <laughs> Let's pop this back up. We can just make the little bit of sauce over on this other burner while our potatoes are finishing. Sounds good, cat. You go find some tasty snacks. And then back to being steamy. No, I don't usually. Is this working or not? Hello, fam? There we go. Yeah, I don't usually calculate the macros and stuff like that, the nutritional value of my food. But what I do try to do is just like make a balanced menu to begin with. Yeah, we're foggy. It does. So, I mean, I've done bodybuilding before, so I'm familiar with the apps and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, just eat a balanced diet and everything in moderation and then you don't have to take the time because it really takes the fun out of eating food when you're calculating every calorie that you're intaking. It's like you might as well just be a robot. Butter. Flour. Roasted chimkin over baby carrots, Yukon gold mashed potatoes, fresh sourdough baguettes. Beautiful cookie. You almost like went with the French style of food just like me today. So a couple tablespoons of butter. We'll start that melting and then I'll go grab the milk from the fridge. And then we get to check on the Coco Ven. Three minutes. Three minutes until our original 45 minute timer went off. <laughs> yeah, chimkin is like the word for chicken if a dog was saying it. Chimkin. Yeah, for sure, Mish. I'm sure it's hard for people not to obsess when they do that, right? So one cup of milk. I'll be back with that. And same with the cheese. The gorgonzola. Doggo, you're the best helper. Maybe we'll wake up uncle now. Otherwise he won't sleep later. Oh yeah, I forgot you're also a milk dog. Some 
Sometimes when I bend down and get stuff from the fridge, she sniffs right in my ear. <laughs> and it tickles. Milk for the sauce. And then remember from our subathon, the tasting, when we vacuum sealed this, so that has been waiting for us. We will need a whisk for this. Whiskey business. Mike, do you know what a meme is? It's a chicken meme. Okay, I'm gonna go wake up Sam. Ear sniffs, I know. <laughs> I mean, nice, but still. At least it's not yelling. Okay, we successfully did it. We woke him up. An earthquake of sorts. A whispering earthquake from Astra. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> okay, let's check our, our taters real quick again. I feel like they're almost there. Almost. They're pretty big, those ones. That's why it's taken a bit. Melt our butters. Cat slowly pokes you, Cookie. Swipes at your eyes. Really? Tries to bite your nose. Oh my gosh. Uh, Dad, hello? Hello, Dad? <laughs> I'm just imagining. Oh, that's like me, Green Fang. So I guess I'm a raccoon as well. I always sniff my food before I try something new. Even if I've had it before, I still sniff it. Yeah, Kimmers! We're buttering it up. Get to check on our chicken soon. Do this. And that for now. Bring a trivet down. Stare at you with a paw on your arm yet. Excuse me. Hello? <laughs> okay, this is almost ready for the flower. Just let it get bubbling a bit more. The digging, does he dig like this? So cute. What, are we talking about you? <laughs> So once the potatoes are cooked, we just have to peel them, rice them into a bowl, mix them with all of the ingredients that we already set aside. Pipe it out. That should be easy enough. I'm not going to stress out too much about the piping part. Okay, it might be a bit loud. Cat will want to see. Oh yeah, it's cooking right along. I'll just put that back in. It's happy. It can stay in there until we need the oven. Nothing bad is gonna happen. Only good things.
Yeah, girl. Okay, now we're gonna do a couple tablespoons of flour, just sprinkled over the butter. And then we're gonna whisk it in. Until it makes a paste of sorts. The thicker your roux is starting out, so if you add like more flour than butter, well, the more liquid that you're gonna have to add later on. So not necessarily a good thing. So I'm gonna leave this roux, this consistency. So I don't want to end up making like a ton of this gorgonzola sauce. And then once this is all bubbling up a bit more, come in as well. Then we can start to slowly pour our milk and that's so it doesn't clump up. The crowd goes wild. Mish had three hot dogs earlier. That's impressive, Mish. And yeah, high endless tessellations. You saw the doggo nose. She's loving all the stuff we're cooking today. Okay. I'm going to turn this down just a bit. Let's go from like five to three. So a little butter, or sorry, a little milk at a time. Stir, stir, stir. Make sure there's no lumps. It should get uh, thick like almost right away. Like that. So this is what's gonna happen. It's gonna get like lumpy. And then we're gonna add more. Need to hold on to my pan for a sec. Okay, that's looking good. Now we should be able to like basically pour the rest in. If you're feeling wary, don't put it all in right away. Stir, stir, stir. So this is a mother sauce that we learn in culinary school, bechamel, like a base cream sauce, but there's not actually cream in it. Hygienic, I'm doing good. How are you? Thanks for popping by today. Make sure you go around the edges as well. The roux likes to stick there. Now the rest of this. Good ratios. This is going to be lovely, I think. And now we can start to season. So for sure, a pinch of nutmeg. That's very traditional with this sauce. As well as some salt and pepper and obviously our gorgonzola cheese. Sloppy Joe's, I have thought about that recently too. I was like, should I make that on stream? No one's ever requested it or like really even talked about it ever. But that is something that I grew up with. I'm sure we could make like a banging rendition of it. Been years, so long. Was it good, Cookie? Do you use, um, like, the Sloppy Joe seasoning pack? <laughs> Excuse me. Just a pinch of nutmeg. Yeah, you got to use the seasoning pack. I'm sure it is not a thing, Mish. Definitely sounds like North American. Kimmers, yeah. <laughs> Bringing it back. Oh yeah, I forgot I was out of pepper. R.I.P. Hurry. I think I got more peppercorns. Just sprinkle my salt first. Do I like prosciutto? I basically like 
almost any cured meat or cheese, Chris. Like, that is some of my favorite things in life. If you ask Sam, Sam, what is Kate like? He'll probably say meat and cheese. <laughs> Mish, you're wrong. Maybe in my future life, I will love liver. But in this current one, I can attest. <laughs> I do not. Yeah, prosciutto de parma. Dude, you gotta take a trip to the Italian center, it sounds like. Okay, this is coming up nicely. It's not sticking on the bottom. No matter what animal, you always have stock. I love it. Renor is on fire today. Okay, my peppercorns. Peppering corns. Got him. You watched a documentary on prosciutto de parma? This peppercorn looks so good. And yeah, I don't know why, but I always go like pretty heavy pepper in my bechamels. I just like how it cuts through the richness. Okay, now we'll uh, crumble. We'll crumble some gorgonzola in. I think we're all nerds here, Chris. Yeah, don't feel weird about that one. We're a bit of food nerds. Okay, we're gonna break off a chunk. Yo. Look at that. That's some funky cheese. We'll start with this. We can always add more later if we're like, uh-huh, it doesn't really taste. But you can't take it out. I love the Italian center, dude. Yeah, if I wasn't like starting my own business and stuff, I'd probably be a lifer there. <laughs> Just work there forever. Yeah, it looks strong, hey? I'm actually gonna take a little chunker. I don't mind blue cheese at all, but I know Sam doesn't love it. Like, he'll eat it, but like I said, he doesn't love it. Which means it's not his first pick. I just missed my mouth. Oh no, Doggo will get it. We'll start over. Mmm. <laughs> it's like strong, but creamy. Mmm. The salt? Yo. Let's see how this goes. Is it gonna melt in? I forget the melting properties of blue cheese, but pretty sure it will. And hi, Bob. Thoughts on using white pepper in beige? I mean, I don't really use a ton of white pepper. Most of the spots where I do use white pepper is actually like Chinese food. Has a lot of white pepper being used in the cuisine. Watch out, girl. Just don't want to roll over your feeties. Good girl, you cleaned up the cheeses? That's a funky one, hey? You've never used a cookie, so if you ever do use it, 
buy the whole white peppercorns. Don't get the pre-ground stuff. Doesn't taste nearly the same. It's like floral, kind of spicy, and like kind of tingly on the palate. Okay, I'm gonna go for a little spoon dip and see how this is. And then I think it's potato time. Hi, Williminy, how are you? So see the simmering as well. And then I wanted to show just the consistency of the sauce. Coats the back of the spoon. Mmm. You don't, like you wouldn't know that there's blue cheese in there. But I'm getting some of the funk, like on the end of the palate. That's really good. Okay, I would say that's complete. I don't think we need it any thicker or thinner. That's gonna like coat the asparagus so nice. So I'm just gonna tap off the whisk. We'll reuse this again. Oh yeah. I don't know, I like seeing the pepper flex in the sauce. Just like how I enjoy seeing the vanilla specks in like sweet things. I like seeing the black pepper. So I'm just gonna put a lid on this and then just set it aside for now while we focus on the potatoes. This is just a really quick reheat later on when our asparagus comes out of the oven. And yeah, nice little mini. It's Friday, it's been sunny. Can't even complain about that. Quick potato test. Should be good. Turn that off. Take it out. And Chiquitas, 2004. Thank you for the follow. We'll just pop those into a colander out of the pot. They can start to cool. Just gonna fit in here. Ha ha ha. Winning. Thick potatoes, I know. They're massive right now. I thought they would never cook, honestly. Mm, Lauren is? Yeah. She's near the Nor'easter. Might get a little dust in where you're at, Mike. Okay, I can get rid of this now. Potatoes messed up the burners, do you see that? They were really boiling. And now this is a pretty important part of these potatoes. So you do wanna move relatively quickly so that they're still warm when we rice them. Which I'm grabbing that now before I get dirty hands. I'm just gonna use the Spätzle press, AKA ricer. So next up, we're gonna work on peeling mm. these. And then I think, just pop the tater in this big bowl beside us. It's gonna be super duper hot. Yes. What if I just hold the potato with a cloth and then use the paring knife? That's what I'm thinking. Boom. Just kind of make a slit in to start opening up the skin. And that's it. Almost just like rub the paring knife across and it'll peel off. Beautiful. Just 
leave all this starch in the cloth. What if we just use the cloth? Whoa, that works even better! Oh, that's so hot! Okay, that works so good! Are you getting your bony? And then all I'm gonna do once these are all peeled is we'll just come back over after and take care of the other like potato eyes and stuff that we don't want. So yeah, clean, clean dishcloth works perfect. And then you don't burn your hands either. What? It's so special. Ouch. So dang hot still too. And like starches are scary when they're hot because it'll stick, stick onto your skin. It's so yellow, the potato as well. That's a great hack, right? Like, I don't even feel the heat of the potato through the couple layers of cloth that I did. And it's really taking, like, no, nothing off of there. Oop. And yeah, careful, because they are pretty soft, right? Don't smoosh it in your hand. That's a potato butt. <laughs> yeah, Torino. Torino knows. So yeah, the only thing you gotta do is like at least start it peeling. Otherwise I find you kind of smoosh it. Potato starch will eat you alive. At least these ones aren't as starchy though as like a russet. I'm looking at the clock. 34. We've been working hard today, chat. Thanks everyone for hanging out all of the hours. We're almost there though. And I'm sure you guys know that. Just gonna do a little fold. It's getting a bit messy. So pop open the skin, rub it off. Kind of looks like the backside of a minion. <laughs> Too cute. Yeah, the potatoes, they were a little bit green. And what causes that again? Too much sun? Or is it when they're not like stored at a right temp? But I've noticed like a lot of potatoes in the store lately have been like that. So I don't know if it was something with the crops from the summer with the heat. Just over time. Too much sun, okay. So that's what I'm thinking then. Hello, Peel? Supposedly there was a bad one this year, Flood City. And yeah, now there's a shortage, of course, right? Okay, success. Now we just have a kind of starchy cloth, so would recommend obviously washing that out before you put it in the washing machine. But yeah, that's like no waste at all. Wow. Boom. Now all I'm gonna do, like I said, is just take care of some of these funky bits that we didn't trim off. 
the eyes or anything else that we wouldn't want to eat. Guys, I don't think my waking up of the bear was successful. He has not surfaced to this earth yet. Green potato chips is not good for sure. Rename Paul GSD? What? New habitat? This is Paul coming in with a new name then? Welcome. What's happening? How are things? We got hot potatoes. That one looks pretty dang good. Okay. Now I'm gonna wash my starchy hands. And then before we start racing, I just wipe my hands in the dirty towel by accident. <laughs> wash my starchy hands and then dry them with more starch. Before we start racing these, because we want to mix everything in while it's warm, let's just get our butter melted. That's our starch barrier, remember? Hi. We'll do 30 seconds. We got that. Milk. Three egg yolks. We'll sneak in some roasted garlic oil. And then the butter is what we need. Put ice cubes on his feet. <laughs> it's your gamer tag? Sweet. You're doing good. That is great to hear. Okay, butter has been melted. Give that a swirl. So, I think we can fit like a whole potato in there. Go boom. Can we pop the lid on? Yeah. And then all you do is squeeze. And this is how you get like the lightest, fluffiest mashed potatoes. A whole month's cookie? R.I.P. You'll never get that back. <laughs> okay, I need to dig out this one potato. Come back. Almost lost you. Good workout. Dunzo with that. That's how fast that should go. And now kind of spread it out. Just gonna grab a spoon. Almost two months for cookie, actually. Yeah, kind of terrifying, right? Oops. 
oopsies. This. First we do the butter. I'm just gonna read the steps since I haven't done this in a while either. Yeah, they literally just put everything in here, but definitely don't over mix. So drizzle your butter first. I'm actually gonna mix the egg yolks with the milk or the cream to create a barrier from the heat of the potatoes to not cook the egg. Just whisk that in really quick. That's a good uh, idea for sure. Almost looks like rice, almost, hey? Actually, what if I pour it this way? Whip up the eggs first is another suggestion, the yolks. And then whip the cream into that. Maybe that is why they call it a racer. Our community. Hales will often go green when they're not stored properly and exposed to light. Due to formation of chlorophyll, green color is a useful indicator that levels of certain toxins are harmful to humans. Glycoalkaloids. Well, I've definitely seen potatoes greener than the ones I used today, so I'm not gonna be concerned. I'll let you know tomorrow if anything crazy happens. Dac, this is a special French dish. And you'll see in a little bit why there's eggs. So this is our roasted garlic oil just for some flavoring. Little drizzle of that as well. And then cream and egg yolk. And now we mix, mix, mix. Mm, yeah, I'm gonna leave pepper out of here actually. It's not super traditional. Like this definitely has to be mixed thoroughly, but definitely don't over mix to the point where the starches get too gluey, right? Mmm, the roasted garlic oil in there, really nice. And then I don't even think I'm gonna add any more extra salt. We can always sprinkle on afterwards. Okay, this is looking great. This is how I remember it looking in culinary school. So it thickens up pretty quick, as you can see. And I'm just gonna stop mixing there because it's going into a piping bag next. Just gonna co-mingle some things out of this area first getting a bit bunged up for the pepper so i don't in this instance i don't actually want to see the black flecks that is something i remembered from culinary school so this would be a white pepper instance torino has given us potato info as well Yeah, so that's what I'm thinking is from this past summer, Torino, when we had the 50 Celsius heat wave, just rocking the farms, I'm sure that's where that happened. Yeah, piping bag, so Duchesse potato. So now, prep probably, no, we might do just one pan. Doesn't look like too, too much. Prep a pan with a sheet of parchment. Otherwise, these might stick. And hi, Shamrock. How have you been, Brian? Feeling a bit better in life? Hello. Lauren, 
That sounds like a pretty good idea. That makes me feel a bit better, just you like getting checked out, especially before the storm. Because like I said, I would hate for something to happen and then you can't actually get help when you need it. I'll be around on Discord, Lauren, if you do need someone to chat to like later while you're waiting. I can be that person. Whoa, kicking the bone. Kicking the bony. Astra's like, hey. And now we're gonna get a star tip into a piping bag. And then I think I'm also going to take the cocoa vent out of the oven and start to get it heating up to 425F. <laughs> yeah, Cookie feels better too that you're getting help. We care about you. Yes, what? Okay, what uh, chain restaurant does the fried mashed potatoes, Chris? Is it like Earl's or something? Can't remember. This might help us too for filling the piping bag just because this is heavy mixture. Let's do this. We will take this cup. We'll flip over the tip, put it down in the bottom. And then that way we can hold this all together. <laughs> Torino, yeah, I'm a doctor. <laughs> oh my gosh. Holy, there is a, a human over in the other room. There's a live human. We were questioning. Bob said, put some ice cubes on your toes. Whoa, just put your hands there. Yeah, I got <laughs> built in icicles. It's winter time. I could ask a TV company all day. She was curled up with you, so cute. Okay, we'll call it there. Otherwise the piping bay gets really heavy. Couple pounds of taters. Yeah, four reviews from your cupcakes and everyone's fantastic. Yahoo. <laughs> okay, Blood Oak is heading out. Thank you for hanging out with us literally all day. I hope you have a wonderful sleep. And Kermit is rolling in with a 13 month resub. Okay, also we're doing this. <laughs> Up to 425 Fahrenheit for the asparagus and the potatoes. And then I'll also put these two racks in. It's gonna be loud one more time. Welcome to Daylight Om Nom Nom Dog. <laughs> Om Nom Dog. Okay. Don't worry, we'll check out the cocoa van in a bit. So now, bring this up. And then you can literally just like shake the taters down to the base of the piping bag. Twist, twist, twist. And if you do the mixture right, this shouldn't be too hard. I'm just gonna take this out of here for a sec. But as the potato cools, it's gonna get tougher to pipe, right? So now you can pipe these whatever size you want as well. I think I'll go like three by four is what I'm gonna aim for. And we'll just like literally make a little poop moji. I think I'll actually start here. <laughs> poop moji, but potato form. Oh, this one's gonna be a bit small. Burrito! 
It's a potato. I love it, Lauren. So basically double baked mashed potato. Well, how many have concluded that one must have a ton of patience to be a pro cook? I can concur with that statement. I don't know if those are too close together, but we'll just keep rolling. Try and space it back out normal again. Yeah, you really do need patience, especially when like things go wrong. You can't just get upset and give up, right? Like if you're getting paid to do something, you can't just walk out and go home, chat. Four, yeah, it might be a four by five, hey? I really committed to the one tray. Thanks, Willamini. This is the second time of me piping today. I also iced 28 cupcakes earlier. That was pre-stream. Uh, I guess I'll squeeze this last little bit out and then we'll do a refill. Don't even know if there's quite enough here. The dog's face is literally right here and she's tilting her head as I pipe this. She's like, what the heck are we doing right now, Auntie? Yeah, so this is the most traditional way cookie and this is how we were taught in culinary school to do Duchesse potato. I have never heard of it being put in the pan like how Bon Appetit did. But that's the easy part, for sure, if you did it that route. But if you have the time, for sure, this can be like something special to show people. Since like a lot of people here today didn't know what these were, right? They're so yummy though. And yeah, I can imagine these with the gorgonzola cream sauce. Oh, I'm dead. Really, any kind of this dipping sauce would be good. Crispy, potatoey, light, but also like buttery still and rich. I don't know, it's just something different. Yeah, I don't honestly think I've made these since culinary school. How's Annie? Are you done all of your grading now? Yes, and that's the other one too, Cookie. Good one. Is more surface area equals more caramelization and more flavor. Shake it, shake, shake it. Brian, we have the bacon in the Dutch oven back here with the chicken. Chicken braised with red wine, bacon, and mushrooms. Not quite there, Annie. That's okay. You'll get there. Finishing up this weekend then. So I'm going to say what? About 10, 15 minutes for these babies. I have a little bit left here. Such a shame. I really wanted to just do one sheet pan. What if we do this? This is what I'm going to do. Hang on one sec. I'm grabbing a ramekin. I'm going to fill the ramekin so we also have this baked version. 
Oh, chem. Chem was my hatred. I'll take bio any day. Thank you. <laughs> chem was Cookie's favorite. <laughs> Okay, so you don't have to be like really fancy piping it in here, but it's good to fill it up, right? So many kids who just don't want to be there, like bottom of the barrel. Dang! You, you took microbio in uh, college? Microcellular even? Yeah. Yeah, if I uh, kept on the science route, that's probably what I would have went into. But then the world wouldn't have been uh, blessed with our cooking. That's our poop potato. Only because of the shape, there's not actually poop in it, okay? <laughs> Poopato. Proper? Look at how yellow this is. We got like a highlighter in here today. Oven, I think, is almost at temp. Let's clear some things while we wait. And then asparagus is going in the oven too, right? A poopado. And then the last thing that we just have to have a quick peek at and dial back in is our gorgonzola sauce. We'll get that heating up while we're waiting for this. And we made it, chat. French food cooking. Takes a bit. It takes a bit of time. Oh, I'm not talking to you. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> Samo's having a shower. Creative Kate? Oh, what? We got another Kate? Yes. Thank you for the follow today. Okay, so there's our potatoes. I'm gonna check just to see the bake time. And then here's our asparagus, just trimmed the ends off and then dressed with olive oil, salt, and pepper. <laughs> yeah, that would be the most perfect pooped ever, hey Mish? If anyone makes a poop like that. Bake rotating once until golden brown, slightly puff, wait. That's a long time. I'm getting these in right now. I can't tell you how long it's going to take. I don't think it's going to take that long, though. Not in this oven. I'm going to say maybe 15. I'm going to save this for later. That's a later snack. So I'm going to set a 10 minute timer right now. We can always, sometimes this happens here. We can taste the chocolate mousse have a little dessert before dinner because we're adults. No one can tell us otherwise. <laughs> Thank you, Cookie. 990 bits. It's not going to take that long. It says 30 to 40 minutes, Mish. Please, no. That is a convection oven. We can't do that. That's going to take way too long. I don't think it's going to take that long in this oven because like I said, it's a convect and it bakes so evenly. I'm loving it. I wish you could see. Can you see the dog face through there? There's just a black dog face with a tail peeking through the sheet. Can you not be weird? Thank you. Why are you being weird? <laughs> Are you being silly today, doggo? She's like, everything smells really good today. Yeah, you can't do the dessert first. You're trying to tell us otherwise? Hey. Hey now. Indominus. You did it. Hello. Okay, so 
<laughs> Look what happened to the sauce. We gotta heat it back up. Please. The sauce got too thick. So I just popped it onto a low heat. We'll heat it back up. Gorgonzola cream sauce that maybe we'll need just a touch of milk to loosen it up when it gets hot again. But yes, we've already tasted it. Super duper yummo. Good job, Indominus. 10 credits away from graduation. It is so nice here, Cookie. Yeah, we really have lucked out lately. Do this more. Zoom it on in. Okay, so asparagus is going in momentarily. See, they're already browning up a little bit. We're warmer than you even, Cookie? I always find that so wild. How does this happen? Pop a lid on our egg whites. Hey. <laughs> Astra, dance it out. Thank you, Annie, for a $44 donation to our ice cream maker goal right now. Yeah, let's go get some ice cream. Thank you for all of your contributions to that donation goal. Maybe, maybe I'll make the first ice cream that I make will be your favorite flavor since you contributed a bunch to it. I'm just organizing as I'm waiting here, friendos. I mean, I know you all see me stream for like four to five hours a day, but then you also sometimes don't see the hour cleanup or more after stream. So that's why I'm always putting stuff away and keeping it clean. It really does help. Pistachio! Oh man! I can't wait now. The sauce is looking a little bit like clumper rude, but I know that's just because it's like cool still. I'll just keep my eye on it. You made it this summer. That's right, Mish. Mish gets on like a pretty good ice cream train in the summer. And yeah, the color. Wait, how do you make it right then? I hope I don't crumble under the pressure. I'm just gonna pop this in the fridge and maybe come back with some milk. Douches. It's a douches. I cut it so many of these. So many, hey? <laughs> Thousands. Just a little, a little drizzle. Hey, how's that new computer? Cash money? Hey, Indominus, how are you? So amazing. That keyboard's just butter to type on. <laughs> you can tickle the ivories and the keys again. Ooh. Nice. It has feedback. Oh, hi. Yeah, there's less components in there. There's hi. more room for things. Hello. How to hold Oh, hi. Do we need a little mousse tester while we're waiting? No, I can. He's waiting. I don't want to wait. You know what I'm going to do, actually? I'm going to pop the chicken up over here. Is that plug connected to that plug? 
Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, it popped. So I was like, okay. That's a knot. And I'm just gonna do a little simmer here. Maybe reduce some of the sauce a bit. Thicken it up. But holy, that turned out good. Wow. That's a cock of egg. There's a happy layer of fat on the top too. <laughs> Look at this. It's right there. Okay, we need an Astra behind the scenes. What is it? What did we make? What is it? Did we make Coco Vin? How do you say it? <laughs> Chicken and bacon? Those were the words that she likes. Chicken and bacon, Auntie. Yeah, wee oui, wee. Oui. <laughs> Okay, I see some simmering happening. We'll loosen it up just a bit more still. Just a touch too thick for my liking. Literally right beside her. <laughs> I'll get Caitlin to post them in Discord after. What curtain? This one? I gotta wash that curtain. <laughs> what did we learn today, chat? We learned that French food takes time. <laughs> okay, I think that did it for the consistency. Wouldn't want it looser than that. So we'll just no keep the whisk. There ain't no Russian in French food. Boom, good one. That. Well, I'm gonna go grab a little moose cup to try. I'm ready for it, chat. Oh, Doggo can clean the milk container. We did really good. Like my counter is almost cleared off. Heck yeah. And yeah, like I said, I'm just gonna bring this up to a simmer, the Coco Van. Maybe we'll center this a bit better now. Yeah. Coke in the van. <laughs> Add the chicken gravy, what chicken gravy? Oh, to the beige, but then it would like go brown. Wouldn't be a very nice sauce. Okay, that was the first 10 minutes. Holy, I told you it wasn't gonna take that long. Yo, this is why we do this. Holy shnikey, it smells so good. Like brown butter already. So first 10 minutes, I'm gonna say maybe 10 more minutes on that. I'm going to put the asparagus in. Ten more minutes. Could torch them also, but then how would you heat up the potato? So that's part of it, right, Mike, is whisking in the raw egg yolk is you still have to reheat the potato completely. Otherwise, it'll be very starchy and gluey. But yes, if you don't get quite the nice browning that you're looking for, then you can do a little torch touch up for sure. Yeah, this is looking great. I know, yeah, you don't usually expect the egg in potato, so it's easy to forget about. Okay, I'm gonna go grab a couple of moose cups so that we can try them together. I'll be back momentarily, chat. Make sure nothing burns.
things are happening. Oh, baby. We are simmering it up. Okay. Little moose cups. Little chocolate moose cups. I'll put Samoa's in the fridge for now. And then I need a very small spoon to fit in there. A mooselet. <laughs> Okay, this is looking good, hey? Thicken up the broth a bit. <sighs> da, 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 da. Nice, Mike has his beer in hand. Bob has his black Russian. Hi, Wes. Okay, so we made this first thing on stream today. Oh yeah, that setup. Look at, real nice. Oh, when you scoop in and it looks smooth. We got to switch the scene. I'm I'm going to cut off these two hairs that keep blowing on my face today, by the way. What? What? Chocolate air. <laughs> Creamy chocolate air. You are an uncle of two nephews? Well, congratulations and definitely keep us updated on the health and how things go. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> yeah, a can of bees. Good one, Lauren. If you're hankering chocolate, this is it chocolate in your face and I will say that recipe turned out amazing and my mousse is kind of marbled look I didn't even mix it in perfectly I can't I can't have any more scoops it'll wreck dinner wow that's gonna kill people I'm scared So smooth, nothing gritty about it. I'm glad I still got it. Oh, careful girl. Careful. Bonk your head. And you can't have chocolates. Okay, I'm smelling asparagus. Potatoes are looking good. For sure, almost done. Could also take them out just a couple moments early, the potatoes, and let them cool off because they're going to be rocking hot, right? Is it sweet? It's not too sweet. It tasted sweeter when it was warmer. But now that it's chilled and like set up, it doesn't taste sweet at all. Just tastes like creamy and then chocolatey. And then kind of just melts away on your palate. So yeah, serving that with like a little crunchy cookie of some sort would be really nice. Yeah, I am smelling asparagus right now. Means we're almost there. And then, okay, I'm gonna do this on a rimmed plate. But then the boys, Actually, I might have enough plates in the dishwasher. They're all clean. Yahoo. So yeah, definitely a rimmed plate if you're serving a couple sauces with the dish. So this is like the perfect simmer that I'm pretty sure this cooked like in the oven. Like that looks good. Indominus about to go downstairs and bring up the pizza oven. Let's go. Yeah, I know. Mike, Sammy said he wasn't hungry. He was just waiting for dinner first. And thank you, Katniss. I'm going to check that out. Merch photo. 
So cute. Oh man, the logo's really big, hey? I haven't got that new merch with the new logo on it. Do you feel like it's too large? Just keep stirring this as well while we wait. Otherwise it likes to form the little film on top. I'm going to try a piece of asparagus really quick. <laughs> Renor, such good duck, Kate. Thank you. Okay, they got a flop to them. Asparagus are flopping. <laughs> really hot. That's the crazy asparagus eating face. I think it's done. Yeah, Cookie, that's right. You're getting one too on Tuesday. And yeah, you like this size. I felt happy about this size too, so that's good to hear from everyone else. Thank you, Katniss. Okay, I'm turning this off, guys. We made it. gonna beep I'll just unplug it I think <laughs> the sound of the timer holy this oven is amazing seriously but da da na very pretty potatoes first off and perfectly roasted asparagus that wasn't even 10 oh actually it was literally three seconds till this goes off what if i move this over a bit it's okay girl you can stay here she's scared She's like, auntie's got hot stuff. Am I picky about any foods? I just don't really like liver. That's about it though. Other than that, I'll pretty much eat anything or at least try it. Okay, off, off. Done, done there. Let's get this burner set out of here. Sauce can just go to the side. What about chicken liver pate? It has to really be made with love for me to like it. And then usually I need some other things to go with it. Like if there's a pate on a charcuterie board or something like that, I'd probably go for it because there's enough other flavors that'll kind of dull it down. Hi, JK. How are you? Renor, you've installed a few of the like little convect ovens like I have. I'm seriously loving it. For 700 bucks? Like, I don't know why you wouldn't. Okay. We need a spatula, tongs, and maybe a slotted spoon or something like that. the three click tongue test. I literally didn't mean to. Sometimes it just happens. Your favorite seafood is lobster. I'm king crab all the way. I don't know if I'll ever get it in my life again. That's it, dear. Wrecked. Look at all the potatoes are scooping. So I was thinking like four of these. I'm 
I'm gonna go chicken next. I think I'll just keep going potatoes for everyone though. Potatoes for the people. I love the brown butter smell coming off of them. It really is lovely. Here we can't cook gooey duck on stream. Not a chance. <laughs> Yo, I feel like my grandpa is like talking to me right now. Being like, good job, Kate, on the potatoes. From my French side of the family. I don't know why, but I'm just imagining this is like something that he would have made when he was still alive. He was a math teacher that loved cooking. Passed away when I was nine. Oh man, okay. Maybe a slotted spoon was the wrong option. I think I'll go chicken leg first. Holy shit, it's just falling apart. I'll show you the backside of it first. So this is like falling apart in the tongs. I'm gonna pop it up on this side. Like I just squeezed it and it almost came apart. Oh, that's okay, Gabe. It happened when I was young. I mean, now that I'm older, though, I just wish that he was still around because I know that we would cook up a storm together. But I know that, like, his skills are, are with me. That's something that will never leave. And... Actually, what if we do the asparagus next now? Really roast it up perfectly in that oven. So far, I've not found anything that it struggles making. That's some of the juiciest asparagus I've ever had. No one lives forever, totally. We're dying every day. It's pretty, uh, like, dark way to look at it, but it's true. Yeah. I'm just gonna go for a little ladle of, like, some of the veggies in the sauce. And then I will do our cream sauce on the asparagus once we have.
of course the audio cuts out as i'm doing like the best part of the stream almost flipped the table just now but it's okay <laughs> i get so mad <laughs> I didn't notice forever. Ugh. That's fine. At least you have background tunes. <sighs> okay, now I'm going in for my little onion, onion, carrot, mushroom, bacon scoop. Whoa, that's a good one. I don't even know where to put it. Excuse me, potato. I'm gonna need you to become friends more. Okay. And then Tika Sella was subscribing and I almost missed that. Thank you for the 11 months, friend. Using your Prime Gaming sub. And I mean, you could garnish this with some chopped parsley, but really, do we care about that right now? I just want to shove this in my face. To me, that is like such a eh, French plated plate too. How it looks. The stream died on you, Katniss? But everyone else can see it though, right? Holy. This is really looking nice. I'd have to do like a wide... Wide angle. Chicken wing, chicken wing, hot dog and bologna, chicken and macaroni, chicken with my homie. Dust, thank you for gifting the sub to Indominus. Coming back to visit us today. That's it. We did it. <sighs> what if the van is the coke? Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, I have to scroll up. And see how long this was muted for. It wasn't that long. It was right after... Right after we were talking about we're all dying every day. That wasn't that bad. And Average Joe721, thank you for the follow. Gabe, what's my Insta? Cook with Kate. What would this plate cost, Weasel's asking? Uh... I would say minimum $30. It might seem expensive to you, but with all of the different components on here, that's why it would cost that much. Okay, I'm gonna go into a potato first. Look at how we can just cut it. Look at it. Mmm. I don't wanna burn my face off. Did I insult you for what? Okay, for sure need more salt in there or on top, let's say. A sprinklage, that's what Sammy was sprinkling earlier. Not like super under seasoned, but definitely can use the salt just to like cut through the richness of the potato more. Let's see how that tastes now. But yeah, like crunchy, but creamy on the inside. Mmm, that did it. Oh, I just meant like chat in general. It might be like $30 for a chicken plate. That's so much. And I didn't see your message about the eggnog in Dominus. So you might have to retype. Okay, let's see how this just falls apart. Oops. <laughs> Oops, we did it. So yeah, if you can completely separate the thigh from the drum like that, you know that you braised your chicken properly. And then as well, we don't want it dried out, so it should also be juicy still. Just like how it's looking. I'm gonna go in for this thigh. Why? Because it looks so good right now. This is going to be a big bite, but honestly, worth it. 
gonna let it cool off a touch. Yum. English is hard sometimes, okay? <laughs> oh, so I already made eggnog. I only do it in December in Dominus. Because it's like a Christmassy drink. So you can go back and watch the VOD on our YouTube. That? Oh my god. I need to ask Samo about the chicken. I haven't gotten into it yet. What? Why are you waiting? That is like melt in your mouth. Perfectly seasoned. Just a hint of bacon and red wine. Oh my. I'm so happy I made extra of this. And then as well, let's try some of the chicken pieces with the mushroom. Mushrooms not falling apart. Still got a nice chew. Try a carrot. Mmm. Or this. Basically a, like a confit garlic clove. Whoa. Do you ever make a quick version of Hollandaise? Like in the blender you're saying, Gabe? Because like to me, Hollandaise is pretty quick on its own anyways. I'm usually able to have that together within like 10 minutes or so. Let's try some of the asparagus with the sauce. Gorgonzola cream sauce, but not overpowering. Uh, that's what I was thinking. I was like in the powdered version, because we can get that here too, Mish. Yeah, so I've made a ton of blender hollandaise. It works great. Mmm. Mm-hmm. What if I do this? Holland Blitz. Squigs says, hi, Squigs. This is a bite of bites, chat. Duchesse potato with gorgonzola cream sauce. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sounds good, Nessie. Just want to swallow my food first. Thank you once again, Nessie, for the biddies that you contributed today. And yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Lamburger day. We're Lamburgin with lots of feta. Yo, are my internet siblings fighting again? They would never do that, right? And I didn't say anything for a recipe. I think I have a couple in Discord. The Gordon Ramsay one? No. I think it might be this one. I'm gonna link one right now from Serious Eats. I didn't actually read it through, but I think that was the one with the blender version. I'm gonna try an onion. I don't love them, but I think it's gonna be tasty. Just the way that they were cooking in all the sauce. Mmm. Really sweet. Really nice and sweet. Wow. I just want to keep eating this. Mmm. I'm done. 
<sighs> Thank you, Dust. Annie's in a tea kind of mood tonight. Ooh, what tea? And yeah, I don't have a restaurant weasel. And a substitute for the mushroom. So as soon as you do that, let's just know that it's going to be untraditional from that point. Because the mushrooms are like a big part of that. Uh, like any root vegetable, squash would be okay for a veg in there. Just choose veggies that can withstand a longer cook. So nothing like delicate and green for sure. No cauliflower, no broccoli. Or just take them out completely. So we own the truck weasel. We bought the truck last year and it's just sitting in storage right now over the winter because it's way too cold to even work on it. And then come spring when it warms up, we will start framing and get it spray foamed and then build the rest. No dessert until I finish that Torino. And uh, haha to you because I already tried some. <laughs> who do we want to go raid today holy montana max barbecue is cooking in the dark jerk chicken and confetti rice what's cosmic cat doing taco tacos and butter chicken pizza a tabatai cooking ramen cook makes pho and chai thai oh i don't know Hi, Tron. How are you? Yeah, Bob saw the tour of the truck. Thank you, Willamini. I know. And we even did like a long stream today. <laughs> Not this nine to five is the flipping joke. I couldn't agree more. I made this for myself when I was 16 years old. Oh, yeah. Samo. Was this the first thing you cooked? Uh, really? You know, as a test, yeah. Should we raid Cosmic Hat or Graham? Or Montana Max? We're on the right track. Good. Love you too. Are you going to stop by tomorrow, Tron? Thank you, Clemmy. It really did turn out good. And yeah, I got like rosy cheeks in here. It heated me up. Perfect. We'll be on starting at 11 a.m. Pacific. I'm thinking right now. You want to see some pho being made? Or taco tacos? I think pho. I've been enjoying this uh, rating gram thing. Woohoo! And then we still got to wait for the day that Graham Elliott streams on Twitch, one of the Food Network chefs. I will be watching and judging. Okay, friendos. Thank you for the awesome stream. I can't believe it was like over five hours today. Feels good though. Want subs today? Do it. We'll do it tomorrow. We'll do it tomorrow. Work on a new goal. How about that? Oh yeah, Sam's mom having her butter tarts made it over there too. Okay, friends. So, thanks for hanging out with us. Hopefully, I taught you something new about French food. Lots of traditional dishes today. Even the mousse is something French. So, there's some inspiration. Save the recipes or just pop in our Discord if you need them. But like I said, we'll be back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Pacific. Fresh ground lamb burger, feta, homemade buns. It's going to be amazing. I cannot wait to make this with everyone tomorrow. And yeah, if you need us, you know where to find us. Discord, Twitch, just send us a message and we'll get back momentarily. Yeah. We oui, Francais, framboise. <laughs> what? Yeah, bye besties. So cute, Clemmy. Okay, take care, friendos, and we'll see you next time. Let's go spread the deliciousness to Graham. Bye. bye. What? What are you so excited about? Ouch.